All right. All right. The time is 7.33. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Uh, Vice President Ferguson, are you on the line? Yes. Could you do the invocation, please? Good evening, everyone. Father God, we just thank you for your goodness and we thank you for your mercies. We thank you uh, for being so mindful of us and how you love us. And Father, we invite you into this meeting and we ask that you would give us wisdom and wise counsel and that this would be a productive meeting. And Father God, we just ask that you remove all distractions or anything that will cause this meeting to be unproductive. And Father, we just thank you for opportunity to come together as the city and to do the business of the city. And Father God, I ask that you will bless everyone that is associated with the city, all of the people that are in attendance to this meeting, the employees, the elected officials, and citizens of this city. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Amen. Madam Clerk, should you do the roll call, please? Sure. Councilwoman Fareed? Here. Councilwoman Guillaume? Here. Councilman Hairston? Uh, I don't see him yet. Councilman Herring? Councilman Herring, you're... Oh. There you go. Here. Councilwoman Jones. Here. Council Vice President Ferguson. Here. And Council President Curtis. Here. You have a quorum. Thank you. Is there a motion to adopt the agenda? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Opposition. Hearing none by unanimous consent, the agenda is adopted. Uh, the only two items on the agenda are the uh, resolutions R-34-2024, a resolution to revise the rules, regulations, and fees schedules for the gold room, and resolution R-35-2024, a resolution to revise the rules, regulations, and fee schedules for the community center and Woodmore Town Center. Uh, we can start uh, with R-34. Uh, we've gone over this before. I think the the sticking point has been the um, the waiver, uh, I believe, the last time we had it. But I open the floor to council uh, if there are any updates or questions uh, regarding R-34 2024. Yes, Mr. President. Councilman Mahari. Yeah, I have a couple of items I want to go over on this. Um, I'm starting with the uh, goal room, mm -hmm. regulation fees and schedules. Um, Okay, I guess I'm looking at um, on page number one under uh, rules and regulations under inquiries. It has um, like non non prime time events. What page? I'm sorry. Uh, uh, go into the rules and regulations, pass the resolution into the body of the page uh, one. That was it. Page one, right there. Yeah. So item number one. So I just want to be clear on this. So basically, a person has to reserve a minimum of four hours for a non-prime time event or or a maximum between four hours, a minimum of four hours and a maximum of seven hours based on the, on the rental rates that we have in place. Is that correct? Is that what we're doing here? Uh, I believe so. Um, Ms. Bunn? That's correct. Mm -hmm. So if somebody, so on average, a person would have to spend on average for those, for that event, if they do a Monday through Friday, they got to spend on average $900 for a uh, event, no matter what. The minimum they're going to pay is $900 for that event. That's correct.
Is that is that correct? Yes, if that's that's what they if they are in that that line, yes. So, and if they get it on Friday, the minimum they're going to spend is a thousand dollars, and that's two seventy five per hour. Um. So, so get, go ahead. So Monday through Friday, between nine a.m. and ten a.m. is one seventy five per hour. That's for Glen Arden residents, and for a non-resident, it's two twenty-five per hour. Looking at only non-residents because that's where most of the money is going to be made at. Um, so for non-residents, it's going to be nine hundred dollars minimum. You're going to pay to use that room, and Monday through Friday, and a thousand dollars if you use it on Friday. And I guess my question is. Um, um, we're not making money on it now. So why will we, um, where currently the rate is $100 per hour where you can use it for $400 for an event. So we're taking up the rate for, an, for at a time when there's never, when the room is always black during the week. So what's going to make you think people are going to pay a thousand dollars, nine hundred or a thousand dollars, nine hundred or eleven hundred dollars? That's what it should be, nine hundred or eleven hundred dollars for Monday through Friday. If we're not even getting, if we're not booking anything now except for repasses, um, at four hundred dollars. I mean, versus the four hundred dollars that you pay now for the rum. If we're not booking anything at four hundred dollars, and we're not getting any business which is mostly what will come in during the week. Why will we take it up to $900 between $900 and $1,100? I'm not understanding the logic. And that business, business wise, that makes absolutely no sense. Can I answer? Yes, you can. Okay. So I disagree. Um, we have been booking um, the room. We actually got a big contract recently with the, um, with the, uh, Greater Washington Urban League, which we re received over six thousand dollars from that. That was a weekday event, so people are starting to hear about um, the Gold Room. We're starting to get more uh, traffic in, other than repasses during the week. So we have been busy. We're all of our Saturdays coming up are absolutely completely booked, um, and we're looking at just booking Fridays at this point. So we have been booking, we have been making money. Um, and then I, you know, if you wanted to have, you know, finance jump in, they can explain that we have been making money at the gold room. Let me just go back to my original question. I didn't say anything about the weekend. I said Monday through Friday, you booked that one event for $6,000. How many other events have you had on a week? outside of repass. So like I was stating that we are starting to get traffic on Fridays now. Okay, I'm asking again, how many events have you booked Monday through Friday outside of repasses? I'm just, I'm just trying to figure out because it makes absolutely no sense to try to charge $900. You're not booking anything now, so why, what makes you think somebody's gonna pay $900? Or $1,100 for a room that that's not being booked now for at $400. You can book it for $400 now and get the same amount of space, but now you're going to more than double, more than double the rate and think you're going to book and think you're going to book anything. And there is absolutely no, you have absolutely no numbers. I can tell you that right now that would justify taking up the rent on that space from $400 to $900. Because you you just you just quoted one what you got lucky enough to get one event at six thousand dollars, but I'm asking you what are the how many other events have you had during the week that would justify the taking the rate up that would attract more people to come in at nine hundred dollars versus is it's being at four hundred dollars now and you're barely getting anything. I'm just trying to get an understanding financial. I mean, just let me just tell you this: I've been looking at the numbers and I've been looking at the numbers for twenty years. So I know what the numbers do, and I know what the numbers say. And the gold room is still not making money. The gold room is still in a deficit. So, um, I mean, and I look at the finance report every month. But I'm just trying to ask, what is the logic between doubling the rate 
during the non-prime time hours from four hundred to nine hundred dollars. I mean, you had what numbers did you have to to justify that amount? So I believe if we stay where we're at, we're not going to even we're not going to make money with where we're at now. Okay, but you got but the 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 way you run a business actually is that you start out low and you attract the people in there. You get them in there to see your venue. You get them in there to 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 uh, see what you have. And if the, if, if traffic's picking up, then you go ahead and and get them and tanks them to come in. That's a dead spot. That's a blackout area. That whole the week is a blackout area. You want people in there, so you entice them to come in there. Let let the word of mouth get out there. Advertise it. I see no marketing being done for uh, business hours. Um, so I'm just trying to figure out how do you expect people to come in there at nine hundred dollars when you net, when they're not coming in there at four hundred dollars. So I mean, I mean, there's there's nothing from a business standpoint. It makes no sense. I'm just saying it. You know, I don't know why we would jack up a price like that for a, a blackout. A lot of times people get a lower price to entice people to come in as business pick up and as as, as the as the the uh, uh, words get out that this is a nice room to have a business function in. Then you start taking your rates up gradually. But uh, uh, 20 years of sitting on this counter, 20 years of dealing with this gold room, that rate has been low and has very, been very little traffic during the week. During the week is always a dark, dark period for that gold room. So I'm not understanding. Um, what, what, what numbers do you have? What justification do you have for bringing it up? You keep on saying that you booked this one event, but that one event doesn't justify doubling the rate. So we are the lowest in this area. Um, that's one of the reasons we are the lowest. Um, we're extremely low on prices. Um, and even with these numbers in PG County, we are the lowest. And even with these numbers, we will still be the lowest in the area. Okay. Now let me ask you this follow up question. So we're mm -hmm. the lowest in Prince George's County, correct? Correct. And we're not booking the space now. Why I, I'm not understanding where you're where you're getting that from. I'm getting it from the financial reports. You just gave me one event that you had for six thousand dollars, and you got lucky to get that. But I know there's nothing going on during the week because I live in Glen Arden and I see what's going on. I'm on the council. I see what the numbers that's coming in. Most of the numbers that in your reports are for repass during the week. You're that's not, not getting of, you're not getting a lot of business traction during the week. That's what I'm saying. I mean, and and, and my thing is this: if we're the lowest then that room should be booked every day of the week. So that shows you that the problem is, is, is not taking it up to $900 is not the way you, is not the way to go. That's what I'm saying. Because the numbers are, I, I, I read the reports that we get. I read your financial reports. I read your gold room report. And the majority of the money that's made during the week is thrown in repass. So I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to get a clear understanding on what, what from a business mind, a business point of view, and looking at it from a business standpoint, what sense does it make to take up a rate from $400 to $900 when you're not selling it? That's just like saying, I'm going to sell these apples for $500, but the man across the street is selling his apples for a dollar. They're going to go across the street. They're not going to come and buy my apples because my apples are too expensive and they don't see the reason for doing that. And if they and if they're not if they're not buying my apples, and if I had apples at five hundred dollars and they're not buying them at five hundred dollars now, why would I raise my apples up to six hundred dollars, thinking they're going to buy them then? That's what I'm trying to say. I mean, I guess got to put it in layman's terms. I'm looking at it from a financial standpoint. Y'all looking at it from I looked at everybody else's prices and we're low and we're going to take our rates up. That's not that's not the way you run a business, and that's what I see is the problem here is that people are in here who do not know how to run a business. You got to attract people in there before you take your rates up. And I'm not trying to bash you or anything, but I'm just tired of people coming in here thinking that they can just look at everybody else and say, that's what that's what that's the business model I'm going to follow. Because that business model, business models are done specifically for the group that you're that, for the entity that you're running. This business right now, the go room does not attract business Monday through Friday during the day night, during the daytime hours, during non, non prime time hours. So you may want to keep that rate lower to attract business up in there. Because I don't care what you do to that room, no one's going to sit there and pay nine hundred dollars for that room if you're not if they're not paying four hundred dollars right now. So I'm trying to figure out what is it, what is what is going to get them in a the room at nine hundred dollars versus four hundred dollars. All right. So uh, uh, go ahead. 
Because I'm not going to sit here. I'm not going to be interrupted through this guy. I got a whole lot more I got to go through. And I'm not going to sit here and be interrupted all through here because I want to ask questions. So go ahead. Well, well, this is one question. So I'm, I'm open the floor for council members on this topic so we don't have to get, circle back on it. I can come back to you for your next no, question. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Let's go. If somebody else got a, 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 what you call it, go ahead. Okay. Uh, uh, Councilwoman Jones. Thank you. Um, my question was going to be what uh, Ms. Bunn has already indicated in comparison uh, to other venues. Uh, she indicated that this this is a lower rate. And I think with by the time we finish with the uh, updates of the Gold Room, and I am seeing marketing online for the Gold Room. So to say that there's no marketing, uh, that's not true. The um, I'm seeing plenty of marketing on the on the on social media for the Gold Room. So and maybe we need to do uh, a little more than than that um, to get through this. But my my question was going to be on. Um, concerning the uh, the comparison of venues. And you already answered that and said that um, uh, that would, um, that's the reason for uh, the increase in price. I have no no issue with that. Thank you, Ms. Bunn. Thank mm -hmm. you, Council President. Thanks. On the same topic, um, and then I'll come back to you if there are not any more questions or comments on this topic, Mr. Harry. Um, I, I think, for me, at least, the question isn't why why are we wait, raising the the fee? The question is if we have the lowest in all of PG County, and we're still not attracting someone. If that is correct, which I don't believe it is, but let's just for argument's sake say that is correct. Then the problem isn't necessarily the fee. The problem is the venue. If somebody comes and see that, oh man, this. This person, we can get this room for, you know, cheap, and they still don't want to come, uh, then we have to fix the venue because they come and they see that the venue isn't up to date and up to standard and something they would like to rent, which is why we are going through this, um, uh, through the resolution to update the gold room so that it could be more appealing. Now, I've seen uh, during a weekday uh, tons of traffic in there. Um, because I'm always trying to find a place to park when I come up during the weekday. Uh, now I'm not I'm not up there every day, but uh, when I do come up there on the weekday, uh, I do see that there's a lot of traffic there. Um, and I I agree with Ms. Bunn that we, I mean, even with the increase, we're still the lowest. Um, so we have to attack this on several fronts. Um, one, we have to update the gold room. Two, we have to address the fees so that we can make money. Uh, three, we have to market. Um, and and this the reason why we hired uh, Ms. Bunn and because of her expertise in this area. And I'm willing to allow her to work this area um, to, to see what she could do with the GOAT room. Because like you said, Councilman Heron, we haven't done uh, so great in at least recent history. Uh, and so with... Lakeisha, you know, being an expert in her field, uh, then I'm interested to see how we can transform this to to be what um, to surpass what it used to be. Uh, so, with that, are there any other questions or comments from council members? So, I do see that there is a question from Miss Arnold, but unfortunately, Miss Arnold, during um, work sessions. Uh, it's an opportunity for council to work together without uh, interruption from the public uh, so that we can work it out and move on. Uh, you're welcome to come to the public hearing next week to state your opinion on it and provide advice, or you can email us uh, and you know we can respond to you. If there aren't any other questions from council, uh, then Mr. Harry, you can go to your second one. Yeah, I'm not finished on the first one because I'm still not getting clear because statements were just made that actually makes absolutely no sense. Because again, as I said, the traffic that's being generated now is through repasses. That's what it is. It's through repasses. I agree, Mr. Harris, but and that's, and, that's, and, hold up, and that's a separate fee from non-prime time hours. I'll get to repasses later. But the non-prime time hours are what I'm talking about. Now, 
again, having done this for been on been dealing with this government for 20 years and having worked in events and all kind of planning on my jobs with conferences and everything for you know 20 about 20 years. I'm gonna tell you right now, you're barking up the wrong tree when you're talking about a renovation. Because again, the gold room was already renovated seven years ago. It's very appealing to people. The only thing that the gold room really needs now is an AV system. That's what's gonna attract the business people that I talked to said we can't use the room because when we have when we have a room. And this, if a person had experience in event rooms, they would, this would be, this would I've been laid out for you, that they need an AV system that's operable, operative, I mean, operable for what they want to do uh, for, um, you know, video, PowerPoint presentations and all of that. They also prefer to have a, a venue that also provides catering because they don't want to do anything. They want to come in there, have their meeting and leave. They don't want to have to provide, do all the catering and everything else. So no matter what you are, it's going to be at a disadvantage when it comes to this room. This room is a room to hold events, to generate money for the Golden. It is not the Martin's Crossroads. It is not PG County Ballroom. And I'm just, and it's, it, there's no way that, see, this is what I'm saying when, when we need to look at this as a business, because that's what it is. It's a business. And I don't care what you say, no business is going to raise their rate from $400 to $900 when no one is using that time slot right now. You, nobody's using that space right now. You encourage the people to get in. That's all you, that's what you do. And you do it by, like I said, again, if you were trying to get businesses up in there, then put it, I've been trying to get an AV system in there, uh, a screens in there, an audio, uh, 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 something that's going to attract people that can be utilized for business uh, lunches, because that's what you're going to get most of during the week anyway. You know, yeah. so that's that's my thing. But I just don't understand this whole logic that you can't go and compare somebody else's venue to what you have, because what you have is not what they have. And because their rates are, our rates are low, we should be booking everything in in and of itself. And, it, and we're not booking, not because of the, the way the room looks. It's because we don't have the, the technology that the room needs for what they need to do from, for a business, from a business standpoint when it comes to conferences and everything else. Businesses don't want to. Every every event, every conference that I went to, every conference that I managed and uh, did the finances for, the biggest thing they said to me, we want to be able to get in and get out. We may always make sure there's an AV system in there. If it's not, then we don't want to use that room. We don't want to use the facility because we're not going to put it up ourselves. And that's what you should be looking at. Not spending a whole bunch of money on a, for a remodel that was done. And when a remodel was just done seven seven years ago, and then you're talking about taking out a stove out of the out of the gold room, which I, which bothers me. That's another issue. I'll get to that later um, when we talk about renovations. But anyway, I'm going on to my second issue. But that's what I'm saying. I don't understand this $900 increase. It makes absolutely no sense. You're not getting anybody in there now. Why are you going to take it up oh, uh, uh, one in, over over uh, over um, 100% of um, what the rate was before? And you're not going to get anybody in there now, uh, then. You know, I mean, it's going to stay dark. Yeah, and, and again, I still would like to know how many functions are being carried. And I'm, this is a question that I want an answer to because I'm going to ask. I'm going to come back to it again, probably at the next meeting. So have your numbers ready for me. How many how many events are being held in the gold room that's not a repass during those Monday through Thursday, Friday, Monday through Friday non prime time hours? I'd like to get that information. So we can see what's what, you know, and and also, I mean, in comparing, like I said again, comparing um, uh, 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 <laughs> our venue with other people's venue and saying because it's the lowest going to raise prices. That's way that's way people go out of business. <laughs> that's not what you do. You look at the market. You see what can bear. You see what you do to try your business up in there. All right. My next issue. My next question is. Um, so on the on the prime time events, you got to block seven hours flat. That's what we're saying with that. On number two, prime time events consist of all events. I just want to make sure I'm right about that. Correct, I believe so. Ms. Bond. Correct. Okay. Um. Um, the next item is on page page three. Down under item number three, all the way down right there where it says once the last paragraph. I guess mm -hmm. I'm looking at the um, sentence that says it's the second sentence. 
A rental agreement and security deposit for incidentals is still required for a gratis event. Um, mm -hmm. I thought a gratis event was a gratis event. But what if they go in there and they ruin the space? But I think I thought you were giving these organizations gratis so that they can because of who they are. No, if 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 someone gets gratis and they come in here and disrespect our space, then they should pay for the damage that they cause. Why are you giving gratis if you think they're gonna dis if they're gonna tear up the space? It could be an accident. You know, that's fine, but they're still responsible and accountable for any damage that they do. They have to, any grass event, are, they're still held to the agreement, to the rules Do we and charge a security deposit right now? Say what? Do we charge a security deposit right now? Uh, yes. Ms. Bond? So for, for the gratis, uh, there is no clear indication on gratis. This is something that was included with this. Um, that it needed to 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 be included with the sec the security deposit needed to be included. And for clarity, I said yes because mm -hmm. I I booked some time and I had to pay a down payment, so I assume. So in the old rules, when you under when we have a gratis event, there's no charge. Well, there's a hundred dollar service charge. That's it. So you're not charged. So when people have gratis, you charge them nothing. No, I was informed nothing. Okay, yeah, because it says no deposit. And it says that that's, on these rules. It says that's no right. Ms. Harris, mine wasn't gratis, so that makes sense. Mine was not gratis. That's why I paid the deposit. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just was wondering. I mean, it is what it is. And, you know, I see once they, once these groups belly it, it'll be gone. Um, all right, I just wanted to get that clear. Um, on page four, Let's see. Uh, at the very top, the first the first item. Please note for all gratis and elected official events, this should be scheduled in advance and during non prime time slots or during off seasons. What's off seasons? So slow seasons, um, and this could change possibly. But if we're trying to make money in the gold room, um, I think we should consider. Um, you know, how many events that we do on a busy, busy month, um, you know, possibly one of one event, you know, per per month or something. But I, I, that's where this came in at. What's if we're trying season? to make money, if we're trying to make money, the slower, the slower months, like winter months or something like that. But if we're trying to make money um, in the gold room, Saturdays is one of our busy, busiest days. Um, so that's where that came in at. And it could possibly change if we don't have anything booked, but I wanted to take this into consideration and have that outlined. What elected officials are you talking about? Um, council or, you know, any elected officials that wanted to do, um, do an event on the weekend. But I don't know that ain't gonna fly. So you might have to, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit there and agree to that. You want to hold us to a non prime time time slot. We own the room. We can have it whenever we want to have it. And we I mean my thing is if you're giving gratis to five gratis events to nonprofits and we own the room, when we have an event, we have an event. And I'm not gonna I don't think we should be held to no non prime time slot. I don't agree with that. Kevin, I have a question for you, Councilman Larry. So in that case, council members, and there, there's a, I'm, I'm sorry, Ms. Bond, first to you, is there a, a cap on the number of gratis events that like the fish have? I think it's one, one a year, right? Um, I, be, I believe so. I'm not really, really fully sure, sure with that. Let me ask a question before you go. Are you talking about events that we normally have at like Cancer Awareness and all of those? Yes. No. Oh, yes, I'm not talking about yeah, that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. No, I don't think we should be capped to that. We own this room, and we 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 put a, we put thousands of dollars into this room, and if we want to have an event for the citizens because the building belongs to the citizens. Then we should be able to use it when we want to use it, and you just got to work around that. What you should be doing is getting with us early in the before the next year to find out when we want to have what we what we plan on having. We normally have the same thing every year. So my thing is this: you got 
all of these Saturdays, you should be making more than enough money. But I don't think that should that, that definitely should not be held to this count to this council in events that we had. I don't agree with that. Yeah. Yeah, I just don't agree with that. I'm not gonna tell you and be held to a, a Monday or Friday to have an event that people can't come to because it's during the during work day and we're not working in the daytime. So I gotta work, I gotta take off from my job to have an event in the daytime that nobody's gonna come to between the, in the morning hours or in the afternoons or on a weekday when they may be working too and everybody else is working. That that take that doesn't benefit the community at all. And that's what we're here to do, benefit the community. So one minute you want it to be a business, one minute you want to help the community, and next minute you want to uh run as a business. So if you're gonna run it as a business, then you need to run it as a business coming in at the, at the very first thing I brought up, which was which was the rate. 400 versus 900. So, you know, you can't pick and choose when you want it to be a business. You're going to be a business or it's not. But I don't agree with that stipulation for the council. I do not agree with that. Because if that's the case, then we need to get rid of all, we need to get rid of all gratis events then. Because the groom's not making money. And only the, and, and, and the only be the council, allow, allow the council to do what, what, what events they want to do. If there's a, if, if it's a money issue, then gratis should not be, gratis should not even be offered. Okay, uh, Council Member Jones. Thank you, Council President. Um, <laughs> the Gold Room is slated as a business, and I understand that. And if if a person schedules an event on a particular Saturday, in a, a six months, three months, six months, a year in advance then that if they've given a deposit, then that uh, particular event should take precedence over anything else. Then we as a city would have to work around that. It can't be both ways. You can't have it both ways. Once you wanted a business and then the other hand, you want to just come in whenever uh, the, the city wants to hold an event. Yes, the gold room is, a, is supposedly slated as a business more so than any other, uh, any other, uh, I don't know where that interference is coming from, um, more than any other, more than any other uh, uh, room that we, um, that is uh, used. Uh, that's what the gold room is for. It's It was slated as a business. It's an enterprise zone for the city of Glen Arden. And I'm sure that citizens understand that. If we're gonna make money, if we're gonna be uh, 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 out there to make money for the gold room, then that's what the, the, the form, first and foremost uh, it, uh, issue should be, is that it's a business and we wanna make money. And as far as the gratis is concerned, gratis is only once a year for, 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 uh, each, uh, for any elected official. I understand that the city wants to have different events, but like I said, if somebody schedules a gold room, whoever is the first come first serve, and that goes for council events, uh, mayoral events, any city events uh, that are that are um, requested. Thank you, Council President. Thank you. Yeah, I think it'll be incumbent upon us to work with the gold room coordinator since. You know, as Councilman Harris said, the gold room does fall under council, but some of the things are uh, annual. Uh, and so they'll be easy for us to mark off uh, at the beginning of the year, um, at the beginning of the fiscal year. Um, and then in between then work with uh, Ms. Bunn to schedule any other events that we will have. Um, and I think that's just communication. Um, I, I mean, I see what Mr. Heron is talking about, but I also see what Ms. Bond is talking about. If, if you know, let's say all the elected officials in Prince George's County want to come and have a back-to-back -back event from, I don't know, um, June, July, and August, well, that's not a good business decision on our end. Um, so there will need to be some parameters. Uh, how we define those, that's up to us, but I understand both sides that there needs to be some parameters around it. Uh, and also that there might be something that comes up, but if something that comes up at the drop of a dime, then we will have to 
be responsible and work with uh, Ms. Bunn to schedule it um, where there's an opening slot, whether it be prime time or non-prime time. All right, Councilor Mahari, was that it? Was that it? Okay. Um, let me just be clear on this one because I, I, this is going to be a long meeting. The people jumping in make statements that aren't. It's not what I said. I just said we should not be held to non-prime time hours. That's what mm -hmm. I said. Um, okay. Of course, we're not going. I'm not. I don't. I don't agree with bumping anybody from a slot. Didn't say that we should bump anybody from a slot, as Miss Jones in, uh, inferred in her statement. Um, Sometimes you got to listen to what a person is saying and don't make up stuff as you, that you think you hear. No, I, we've never bumped anybody from us. I've never bumped anybody from a slot. You know, now my slots that I've had, have been, I've been bumped, you know, because they weren't report, they weren't reported, but you know, that's another whole thing, another whole issue. But um, again, if somebody to get paid for it and they got a contract, no, I don't say bump anybody. Like you say, we work, we work with what's, what's available. So, um, I don't know what Councilwoman Jones is talking about in that issue, but what about the council I, president? So if I say, uh, if I say it's Raymond, she's gonna say it's Sunny. But so you know. what, Mr. Harry, second, you the police second. department from their spot when they had when they had the uh, the the uh, an event. So don't sit there and tell. I did not bump the police department so, so from I'm anything. So, you are, you are, you, you know what? You are full of it. Listen, I ain't bumped the police department. So are you? Point of order. You are so full of it. Hey, well, listen, guys. We're not here to argue back and forth. Like so, so here, Mr. Herring, go through all your points. You'll be able to go through them, ask your questions without interference, without any other comments, so that you can get through them. But if we can avoid going back and forth. That will save us the time uh, instead of if being people, here all night. If people are not going to come on here and lie. It's not going to save us some time because I'm not going to sit here and have her tell a lie. This is well, what she normally does. But you know, point of order, so I'm not going to speak because I know I didn't bump the police. Point of order, Council anything. President. Yeah, what's your point of order, uh, Ms. Jones? Council Jones. The, the, uh, the uh, insults from Mr. Herring are not needed. I'm not, I, my Ms. opinion is my Ms. opinion. You lie. It's not your Ms. opinion. Herring. What you're doing is Ms. being Ms. disrespectful, Ms. as you usually are. You and you're very disrespectful because you're lying all the time. So, Councilwoman Jones and Councilmember Herring, any insults will not be tolerated. So. Mr. President, no, I, have right is, to my count, count, I, I agree, Councilman Heron. You have right to to opinion. And if she's going to tell a lie, she, I'm going to call it a lie. Yeah, listen, listen. We are all professionals. We were elected to govern with professionalism and character. I agree. Everyone has an opinion, and they can state their opinion. Uh, but we have to work together. And this is going to be a very long meeting if we just keep on jumping in and going back and forth. Now, you may not like what somebody else says, but that's fine. The person has a right to say it as long as they're not um, uh, bullying or insulting another council member. Um, so with that being said, for everybody on the call, uh, there should be no insults. You cannot call anybody else a liar. If you don't believe someone's telling the truth, that's fine. Uh, let's... let's Let's just move on so we get this meeting. Um, let's have so that we can have a productive meeting without going back. Say it again, it's not going to be productive. If he's going to keep on coming in and telling us. I, I, I under, understand, Councilman Harry. Understand, Councilman Harry, and, and also want you to know that other people have their opinions as well, and I respect. Right, and I, and I respect her opinion. I, I, and she can give her opinion. I have no problem with anybody. I'm the first one to give you the right to free speech. You can say what you want to say. If she want to call me a liar, she can call me a liar. That's I don't care. That's her opinion. And I can respond in kind, but that's well, that's the, that's what freedom of speech is all about. My opinion yeah. is my opinion. I'm not so saying we're not, we're not gonna call it. I understand. So we're not going to call each other a liar. But what how we're going to get through this is, I'm just going to give you the floor to go through all your questions uninterrupted, and then once you're done, we'll move on. Uh, before we do that, I see Councilman Ferguson's hand, and then we'll go back to you, Councilman uh, Vice President Ferguson. Yes, I just wanted to comment on the um, Gratis issue. Uh, as it pertains to the um, elected officials. And it it would be my opinion <clears throat> that um, the elected officials being, uh, I'm referencing the city of Glen Arden elected officials, which would be the council and and, and the mayor, um, that if they, uh, if the gold room is needed, whether it's a Friday or Saturday or even a Wednesday, whenever, for an event, that has been previously scheduled and it is in the budget 
or whether it has been amended in the budget, if it's a, a, a uh, an event that is budgeted um, and had been approved in the budget, then there, to me, I, I don't believe that, I mean, who, who would pay for um, the rental of the room if we just have only one, um, one Gratis there, because we have several, um, we, as far as the council's concerned, we have several events. Um, and I just don't believe that, um, that we should be, be limited to one grand, one Gratis event if it's, if it's in the budget, approved in the budget. The other thing is, I don't believe that, that, um, any council member would, uh, or elected official would come in and, and um, I would hope not. You know, I think that, you know, because they're elected officials that they can uh, go in and, and uh, bogart and put some, you know, override someone's um, previous uh, reserve reservation. So I don't think that was, would be the case. Um, and I really don't think um, Mr. Hammond was, was uh, meaning that. Um, and we respect those that have already previously booked um, the goal run. But I mean, I just can't. I, I mean, I, I, I'm just trying to understand if that is, was the case that um, the rules are saying, say hypothetically, the, the holiday party. So if if I, you know, doing a holiday party, and I'm, I'm doing a holiday party, they say I'm doing a Hill City, so I can only do one or the other. Is that what it was saying, Miss um, Bun? Yeah, I just wanted us to like basically look at the calendar. We and on Saturdays, that's one of the busiest week, you know, week you know, days um, to run out. Um, so just just to actually just um, look at the calendar, and it it may possibly help if you guys provide me with your calendar of events at the beginning of the year, and we can all get together and we can see how it will uh, how it will line out for the. It, for the rest of the year. Because if we have out of four weeks out of a month on a Saturday, and we have two events from council, that mean that we're only getting two guests are only getting two Saturdays out of that month. So we're not really making money on a Saturday. That's all I'm saying. So just to look at the calendar and and, and maybe it will, it will help if at the beginning of the year when Everyone can submit, you know, their their events and we can try to outline it then um, instead of like having two or three um, events out of the month and only the guests are only having one. And, and we're trying to collect money to come into the event space and we're not getting that. That's all I'm saying. Um, yeah. Just to take considerate of that. Okay, I do understand that. Um, and I, I don't see that that's a problem because for the most part, I know with the council. Um, our events are, you know, standard, whether it's two thread days, you know, in the year and they're pretty much around the same time of the month. I mean, for myself, um, you know, once we had the holiday party, I think the next week we booked our dates for 20, you know, for this, for this one. So that wouldn't be a problem. Mm -hmm. Um, thank you. All right. Council member, Harry, I said it will come to you at the vice president first and uh, so we're back at you, Councilman Jones. I'll come to you after Councilman Heron has gone through his list of questions. Um, like I said, so I think that needs to come out. I don't think it's, we should be limited to no non time because this is saying non prime time slots during off season, and I think that needs to come out because we pick prime time spots because we want people to come. So I think that needs to come out of here. Um, uh, next item is. Under forms of payment, um, it says a $35 fee will be assessed for checks from the city of Lenard not cashed within 90 days or, re or for reissued checks. How are you going to get $35 from somebody who has not paid, who has not cashed that check? Or if it's reissued, why would you charge them $35 for reissuing the check? I don't, I'm not understanding it. So we, the liability is on us. We owe them money and we're going to take money from them that we owe them. A refund is a refund. You can't take money from them because you got to reissue a check. 
So I believe that was supposed to be for like um, NSFs or something like that, that they will receive a, a fee of the NF. And that's something that I might have to look at to reword it. But that was only for if a NSF, like a non-sufficient funds come back from a check. And then that's when they'll get um, charged that amount of money. Not in this, this says, this says, a $35 fee will also be assessed for checks from the city of Lenar not cashed within 90 days or for reissued checks. I'll revisit that and look at all of that again. So, Mr. President, you want to you put that up? But it's up. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was still up. Do you see it now? Yeah, thank you. All right. Um, and that was, yeah. But see, right there under forms of payment, where it says checks from the city of Glen Arden. So the checks that we cut that are not cash, they're going to be charged $35 if they don't cash within 90 days. Then they do have an NSF fee, which I understand that. But um, yeah, I don't understand uh, that other fee. All right, I guess uh, if we go down to security deposit. Um, now, they has on there the usage policy, and it says uh, deposits may be forfeited as liquidated damages for the following breaches of the rental agreement and usage policy, ticket sales, cash exchange or premises, room capacity, blah, blah, blah. But what it doesn't have on there is physical damage to the structure. As one of the, because somebody's going to hold you to this. They're going to say, well, it doesn't say anything about me, my deposit being forfeited. I didn't do any of these things. But physical damage um, to the structure, I think, should be listed on there so that they know our right that there's going to be, if there's damage to that to that space, then they're going to they're lose their security deposit. So I'm not sure why it's not on there. Um, it states any damages, fees, or fines that are incurred or conjunction with the renter's events will, which which exceed the amount of the deposit and the responsible. Go back department. up to the top and go do your five things and say they didn't do that. They didn't. They, they they didn't violate any of those. They may have broke a wall out, but that wasn't any of the other stuff. That wasn't clean up, uh, room capacity violation, ticket sales on premises. It wasn't any of that. I think you, if you're gonna if you're gonna have a have something, you need to really spell it out for people. I think it needs to be a number six that says any physical damage to the structure mm -hmm. as uh, one of the uses policies. But you can you can deal with that when you go to court if they, if you try to keep it and they say they didn't do anything. But I think that needs to be added to it. Um, uh, we go to page five. So it says, uh, well, it says, please note that all cancellations will occur a cancellation processing fee of $50. Even if they cancel within the four, before the 90 days period, they're going to get charged $50, but you're going to refund them all of their, it says you're going to refund them all of their, the, all of their, the payments and deposit. They get a full refund if they cancel within a certain amount of period in a certain period. But now here you're saying you want to get a, a cancellation processing fee of fifty dollars, so I'm not understanding that. Um, why are we charging them fifty dollars if they canceled in, in time and they, and they do a full refund? According to your schedule right there, one, two, and three. Then I can see if it's a fifty, if, they, if where it's the ninety to thirty day, you can charge them a processing fee. But if they do that before ninety days, why should they be? Why should they lose anything? I mean, I'm not understanding the whole processing fee of fifty dollars. What is y'all? What 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 rule? Who has that rule? Because I know they they pull these rules from everywhere else and threw them in this in this piece of in this document. Because it's the same document that last one, that last one, last person uh threw out here. So why are we charging a fifty dollar fee if? they cancel more than 90 days before and the room could be rented again. I'm not understanding that. Well, in some cases it can't be. 
it might be too late. I can see and, if they're too late. I can see if this if it's the 90 to 30 day calendar days prior and they get they're getting back 50% of their deposit. Then they they can they can lose they, they, it might be a fifty dollar processing fee in, incurred in that. I mean a fifty dollar yeah fifty dollar processing fee or if it's less than thirty days a fifty dollar processing fee. But if it's the uh, if it's the, the the first one, the booking date to eighty nine days prior, it says full deposit refunded. Why are they being charged if it says full deposit refunded? Why would they be charged a fifty dollar processing fee? Did you want me to answer? I would like to, too. I'm okay. just asking. Um, well, I've seen plenty of times where people um, just come in just to hold a date and um, maybe don't have any attentions on uh, booking a room or just to hold it till they find something else. Um, so I think we need to put something in there um, just in case, you know, just for, for us, I believe um, finance um, actually have to accrue a, a cost for bank cost or whatever um, when they when we doing the cancellation. So I wanted us to actually have something in place where people just not saying, OK, just just to do it is a hold. But um, just to know that they're serious about the actual um, rental um, agreement when they do it. I guess my thing is if they put down a deposit and they're serious at that time, and if they change their mind and they do it within a, a lot of time to get a full deposit, why would they be charged fifty dollars? And I, and what what expense is fifty dollars in the, in the, in a finance department? I know you you know you have your credit card processing fee, which is maybe two percent, two or three percent, and then if they cut a check, and that's about what three cent, four cent. I think it's ten cent. Process a check at SunTrust at Truist. So I'm just trying to I'm just trying to figure out what the what the processing fee is. I mean, I mean, it, it, it seems like it's just a money grab to me. I can understand if it's if, if if items two or three are done, but when you're saying you get your full deposit back, somebody's going to be looking for that full deposit, not minus fifty dollars. So um, you need it. Yeah, I just don't I just don't see that because you're not getting back your full deposit. You're getting back your full deposit minus fifty dollars. So. I think that's an issue too that needs to be looked at. All right. Um, if we go down to day of rental on page five. Um, I guess this is confusing. It says a minimum of 30 to 120 minutes should be allotted prior to the event start time to allow for setup and at the end to complete breakdown of the facility. Who are you talking about for your people? Or no, for, the, for the renter? I'm talking about for the renter. Okay, so then it says... Due to liability issues, no one, including the contract holder, will be allowed inside until the start of the contract time. So if you're going to give them, if they're going to be in there 30 minutes before, how are they going to be in 30 minutes before and then not be allowed in there until the start of the contract time? That's for their guests. So the only people that should be allowed in the room during setup time and breakdown time is only the runner and this in the setup crew or the the people that's actually breaking down and setting up during that but time. It said, but it says due to liability issues, no one, including the contract holder, so that's the runner, will be allowed inside okay. until the start of the contract time. Contracted time. So that just the, the contract holder needs to be removed. <clears throat> Yeah, that needs to be taken out. Um,
Okay, now it says all activities related to the rentals event, decorating, deliveries, and setup and breakdown must be completed within the rental period. If anyone enters before the contracted period, the rental will be held liable. Okay, this again, if you're going to give them a minimum of 30 to 120 minutes should be allotted prior to the event start time to allow for setup and at the end to complete breakdown of the facility, why are they going to be held liable if you got people in there working to help decorate and deliver and set up? I'm not understanding that. Where are we looking at? Uh, right underneath the one I just... Um, Right underneath the one that's highlighted, the next paragraph, all activities related to the renters event, decorating, deliveries, and setup and breakdown must be completed within the rental period. Mm -hmm. If anyone enters before the contracted period, the renter will be held liable. Meaning, so how, the, meaning the guest. So it's just verbiage that I need to just add in verbiage there. All activities, it says all activities related to the renters event Decorating the deliveries and setup and breakdowns must be completed within the rental period. So that really doesn't need to be there because you've already said guests aren't allowed in there at the top. If any, please note for the same day floor plan and rent will, will occur. So what is the same day floor plan change? What do you consider a floor plan change? The same day as the event. No, what 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 do you what is what constitutes a floor plan change? What do you have to do? Is it adding tables, moving adding chairs? Adding tables, it could possibly mean um someone bringing uh, extra furniture in. Um it can be any of that. Mhm. Mm Will occur an additional fee of $150. So if somebody brings in furniture for the event that they brought in, why are we charging them $150? As a floor plan change. I'm not getting that. I can see if your people were doing it. Maybe if your people were doing it. But I just I don't understand the floor plan change because sometimes, you know, um, moving a table from one side to the other should not constitute a floor plan change. I, I can see if you want to change the whole layout, move the stage from one end to the other and all this other stuff. But um, yeah, that floor plan change, I don't I don't get it. You know, um, all right. Uh, let's see the next item. We go to page six, item number 13. The decorator, wedding coordinator may not enter the hall again. This one failed to comply. So, again, if they, I'm not understanding these, this not entering the room at certain times. I just don't get it because if people have these events, they need assistance, they need help. And you're saying now the wedding coordinator cannot even enter into the contract to start time. A wedding coordinator who's coordinating the wedding can't, can't, can't come into the room because the renter is already in there? That makes no sense whatsoever. I, mean, I guess my thing is... I, 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 oh, geez. Oh, go ahead. You can answer that one. I, I'm not understanding this. This states that it, um, the hall until the contract start time. So right. wh whatever start, whatever uh, the rental agreement states for that seven hour time period, whatever their setup time period, that's when the decorator, that's when the um, the caterer, um, and whoever else the event uh, decor furniture you know, company that comes in, that that's when they're, they're set to come in at, during that allotted time frame. Okay, but not, you, but, not of that time frame, um, but in around that, that's the, those time frames. That's it. Okay, but on the previous sheet, you said at the day of the rental, a minimum of 30 to 120 minutes should be allotted prior to the event start time to allow for setup and at the end to complete breakdown of the facility. So now you're saying they can't enter in until a start time. So this, see, this is where all this confusion comes in. I'm going to tell you that, that my problem with this is that when you start pulling stuff from other people's rules and regulations, this is how you get this stuff all jumbled up because you're contradicting yourself again. Either they're going to have 30 minutes to come in and set up and your wedding coordinator and everybody can come in with you, which they should be able to do because you need more than one person to help you set up. Or they can't. Or they're just going to get seven hours and they got to do everything within that seven hours. But you're saying you're going to give them 30 to 120 minutes to do some setup. So, Mr. I'm, just, I'm, I'm trying to understand I, this. 
So I get what you're saying. So let me just add the how I understand it. So a person, and, and Ms. Bunn, you correct me if I'm wrong. A person comes in, in the contract, they have the room for seven hours. Within that seven hours is the contract, is the setup time and breakup time. And you have the event, actual event time. So I have an event, it's seven hours. I'm renewing my vows. So the contract says that I have it from, uh, you know, 12 to seven. Yeah, 12 to seven. So at 12 o'clock, I can come in there. My wedding coordinator could come in there. Uh, any other planners or setup or caterers can come in there at 12 o'clock. The event starts at, I don't know, uh, 1.30. Um, and then at 1.30, that's when the guests can come in. And any time between that 12 o'clock and 1.30, guests are not allowed because there's a liability with the setup and breakdown. But that my contract states that I have seven hours. And if I want people to come in before that seven hours, then that's a that's another time slot that I've paid for. So Ms. Bond, is that correct? That is correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know what? You know, you know, I'm really getting tired of I'm getting tired of this back this ping ponging back and forth because Ms. Bun, you said that is correct, but your rules are not saying that. Now, if, as a renter, I'm going to look at your rules and regulations, and it says a minimum of thirty hour, thirty minutes to 120 minutes should be allotted prior to prior to the event start time to allow for setup and the end and at the end to complete breakdown of the facility. Now, if everybody's like me and going to read their agreements in their contract, they're going to be like, I get thirty minutes before this event to set up. 30, that's 30 not, 120 minutes. It that's depending on what type of event that you're having. That's not what you're but that's, see, that's, that's not what you're not, saying here. Can can I'm saying it depends on uh, the event. Uh, uh, Councilman Harry, let her finish, please. So that 30 to 120 minutes is based off of what type of an event that you're I'm um, having. In the rental agreement, that is stated there. I, it's broken down in the rental agreement of how how much time that you 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 get. Also, um, with repasses, it's it it varies. It's thirty. It's uh, um it it varies. It it changes from just the normal private event um setup time frame. So that's why I had thirty to a hundred. That's why that time frame it it varies that way. So I, I'm not understanding your. Where you yeah, trying is, to get from me? I guess my point is, I'm reading what you have here, and as somebody who's going to rent this venue, you're saying under the rules and regulations, a minimum of thirty to 120 minutes should be allotted prior to the event start time. But then you have over on the next page, on on number thirteen, the de decorator, the wedding coordinator may not enter the hall until the contract start time. So you got. A, de a wedding coordinator and a decorator, where you say they can come in 30 minutes before, then you got on another page saying where they can't come in until the start time. And this is saying a lot of prior to event start time. Yeah. And that's why I'm saying this. It's confusing. It's confusing. You either, either they can or they can't. So I'm just trying to, my thing is it needs to be uniform, but again, I'm telling you, this thing needs to be looked through because again, it's not, it's all out of sync. And this is what happens when you pull stuff out of, from other people's contracts and throw them into your rules and regulations based on this. This is why this is a hodgepodge. Um, again, this minimum of 30 to 120 minutes prior to, prior to means before the event. And it says prior to the event start time. So you get 30 to 120 minutes and you got a wedding. Of course, you're going to want your, your coordinator and your decorator in there if they get 30 to 120 minutes prior to the event. I ain't, I'm not talking about the, the amount of time. I'm talking about the fact that they can come in there prior to the event. But yet, 13 says the wedding coordinator can't come into or the decorator can't come into the hall until the contract is start time. So if I start, if my event starts at noon, they can't come until noon to start decorating. But yet, you're saying I got 30 minutes prior to the start time to come in there and set up. So, Council Mayor, the, the, the other. The other point, so I have 13. Which one are you comparing it to? I'm comparing it to page five, where it says a minimum of 30 to 20 to 120 minutes should be allotted prior to the event start time. So if you're going to take that out and just say they can start, they got that block, and that's when they're going to do it, or you're going to change 13 and say that the coordinator can come in 30 to 120 minutes prior to based on but whatever the event is. So, but Councilman Harry, so this one says, 
if I have this correct, you're saying 30 minutes, 30 to 120 minutes should be allotted prior to the event start time. So if I have right. a wedding starting at three o'clock, then um, then they can uh, from three o'clock. What's that? Two o'clock. Uh, one o'clock. They come in at one o'clock to um, what is this? Yeah. So, but this says event start time. What you're talking about down here, Tina says, says the, the contract start time. Those are two different times. If I, if those, I, those I, are the same. Those are the same thing. Okay, the so maybe I'm wrong. Event, con the, the, the contract and event start time are the same thing. No, no not the way. I, uh, Miss Bond, could you define whether those are the same thing or not? Contract time versus the event time. Are those? Uh, is it? Is Miss Aaron correct that they're the oh, same no. time? The the event time is, let's give an example. So okay. you we, we have seven hours. The the client gets seven hours. That's inclusive of your setup. It's inclusive of your breakdown. So let's say the event is for four hours. They'll come in two hours prior for their event. Their contracted time, let's say um, they get two hours for the setup then your event time is your event time. And then you get one hour on the back end for breakdown. The contracted time is just the whole allotted time. The seven hours. The event yeah, so time if I say is my event, is, event starts. If I say my event is 12 to 7, mm -hmm. what then? I get 30 minutes so on the front. So if your event is from 12 to 7, so you get, um, you'll come in, your, you'll come in, your, your setup crew, all of that will come in at um, 10 if, if, you, if your event time is four hours. And then um, your breakdown time is, um, is by 7 o'clock. So if it's 12 or 7, they come in, they can come in at 10 a.m. Because that's your setup time frame. That's my setup time. So then again, this 13 your is, event is starting at 12 o'clock. So then this, this so then again, they wouldn't my coordinator would need to be in there at 10 o'clock to do setup. Mm -hmm. So I'm, that's what I'm saying. You know, if my event is from, from 12 to 7, I'm at a long seven hour seven hour wedding. So I'm gonna get married and have a reception all in one swoop. And I'm gonna start it at 12. I'm getting married at 12. So my setup time, you're gonna give me two hours on the front end, say, you know, to set up. So then my coordinator needs to be in there at 10. But according to this rule and regulation on 13, she can't come in and tell the contract to start time, which will be 12. That that's not it. That is it. Because the contract no. and the event time will be the exact same thing. No, it's not. Because my, it will be because if, if I sign a contract and say I want to use the I want to use the run from twelve to seven, and my event starts at twelve, and it ends at seven, that's when my event starts. Your contract I, will not. Your contract will not say that, huh? Your contract will never say that, Mister Aaron. It it will say that because that's what I that's what I'm that it will say that because if you're going to tell me what I can I'm going to book twelve hours. I'm you're going to tell me when my event can start. Is that what you're saying? So I'm going to tell me I can I can rent this room, but you're going to tell me when my event going to start. I need seven hours to get married, so I got twelve. I'm I'm, I'm getting married. The preacher's going to be there at twelve noon to marry me, and it's going to end at seven after the reception. So at twelve noon, I need to have my stuff set up. Okay. So the contract is going to say she's going to ask me what time is your event? Twelve to seven. What, well, what block are you renting? Twelve to seven. I'm doing that seven hour block. No, that so would not be the case. That would be the case. She just your said that. She said then she would seven me... hours. Your event is not going to be seven hours. Your you don't, you can't four. tell me what my event is going to be. Wait, See, that's, what, that's the problem you have. One second. You can't so, tell so, me how long my wedding is going to be. Point of order, Council President. Yeah, yeah. It's just point being order. argumentative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Point, of, point of order, Mr. President. Council President, yeah, could yeah, you tell Ms. Jones to shut her mouth and mind her business and keep out of my conversation? Council Member Heron, you're out of order. I'm not out of order. She should have just keep her mouth shut. No, she. Every council member has a right to a point of order. Okay, so when I say when I just say, don't don't interrupt me. No, no, but this will be your first warning. 
Well, you know what? You won't have to get ready to put me out because I'm not going to sit here and let her keep running her bad mouth. Because then I just start to threaten So, Councilman Herring, I'm really trying to be lenient, but that 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 is an insult. So please, I do I do so. Yes, it is, Councilman Herring. That's my personal opinion, Councilman Herring. Look, I accept you work with me because I would rather you stay in this meeting than for me to remove you from the meeting. But then have so, Ms. Jones keep her comments to herself. No, no, she is a council member, just like you have. No, because I, first of all, Mr. President, do I, have, do, I, do I not have the floor? You, if, well, one second. Do I have the floor? No, if if someone points of order, then I have to recognize the point of order, Council Mahara. You know that. In she didn't, years, she didn't you wait for you to that. recognize the point of order. She just came in and commented. I, I, no, no, I agree with that. Oh, that's out of has, order. That, Council Mahara, she has a right to a point of order. Did Every you recognize her has point a of right order? to a point of order. And Did you she, recognize it? Uh, Councilman Herring. Before she spoke. Councilman Herring, like I said, that was your warning. Please. Mr. Go President, ahead. I'm asking yeah, you a Council question. Did Council you recognize her point of Council order? Councilman Herring, I did not recognize her point of order. Okay, thank you. Uh, but thank you. you still insulted her. So the, the warning still stands. So does the warning so, stand for her for interrupting me without you recognizing her point of order? Councilman Herring. I ask that you be respectful of Ms. Bunn. I understand you have questions and you have a right to ask those questions. But you Mr. Don't have President, a right. I have a right to ask questions anyway. I need to ask. No, them. no, you do not have a right. And to I'm not going to sit here because you like somebody. It. don't mean I got to sit here and soft soap a question. I, you don't have to have soft questions, but you have to be professional, respectful. I'm being right professional and respectful. I'm asking a question and I am asking her to answer them. I didn't yeah. ask Ms. Jones to comment. Ms. Yeah, Jones she, is not running the goal wrong. Councilman Herring. So there's the warning. Please proceed with your questions. And if there's another interruption or you insult somebody else, then I'm going to kindly remove you from the meeting. I'll be fine because I'll pick it up at the next meeting. Um, and I will pick it up at the next meeting. Um, so let's go on. Um, again, as I was saying, you cannot tell me or anyone else or Ms. Bunn cannot tell me how long my event is going to be and how long I'm going to I'm going to need to run. If I'm going to rent that block for seven hours and I say my event starts at 12 and it's going to end at seven, you can't tell me I'm not going to have no seven hour long event. I know somebody that had a 12 hour event, a 12 hour event, and I go over. So you cannot tell me how long my event should or should not be. That's not your place to do. I mean, the room is supposed to be rented by the person. They're renting and they're going to use it for what they want to use it for. So if I'm going to get in there at 12 and my event going to end at seven, so you're going to sit there and turn away money because they're not going to do it the way you want it done? Is that what you're saying, uh, Ms. Bond? Because you just said that no one's going to have a seven-hour event or Mr. or Mr. President said that. I don't know who y'all, I mean, I don't know what y'all, who, what people you deal with, but I do know that happens. But Council Mayor, can I, can I just, I'm trying to explain what I think you're missing. And so I, I don't think the point is I can tell you how long your event should be. So if you come into my establishment looking for business and you say that, hey, you want to have a seven hour wedding, well, then you will know that there needs to be a setup and breakdown. So it's not a seven hour wedding. So the contract that I go into with you will be more for maybe like what, seven and nine and 11 hours. So you will have two hours before the event and two hours after to set up and break down. That is what she is saying. So it will just be, it, it will be in your particular contract. But you see, the problem I'm having is that instead of looking at this as you should be looking at, that's what I'm saying. So 13 is not right. Item 13 is not right. The decorator can come in prior to the start of the contract time if you're having a seven-hour wedding. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. So either you're going to take that out and leave in what um what you have in the other one, or you're going to change the other one and say you are start time. You got to do everything within that block. This is this is right. The decorator and wedding coordinator may not enter the hall until the contract start time. But I don't I don't get it. That's right. That's right. Because the contract and the event time start are the same thing. They're not. It is. No, you. Councilman Herring, your event is, in your scenario, your event is from 12 to 7, right? That's the 12. So the contract that you will enter will be from 10 to 9. So you can have two hours in the front and two hours at the end to set up and break down. That's your contract time. 10 in the morning to 9 o'clock at night is your contract time. Your event starts at 12 p.m. Okay. 
So you're saying I'm going to pay for a block of um, so my contract is going to be different from the rules and regulations when I when I pay for it. No, so the contract. So the contract is not going to not, not going to reflect the rules and regulations of the seven times. So you're going to have two times on your contract. Is that what you're saying? So my, when I sign a contract, you're going to have a a twelve hour block, even though I'm paying for a seven hour block. No, I, I, this was just for for the sake of your scenario. The block. No, I'm just saying seven, I'm, for my scenario. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. All right. So the block is seven hours. Yeah, Ms. Bonnie, can you correct me if I'm wrong? The block is seven hours. Can anybody rent the room for more than seven hours? The, with the with the um, rules and regulations now, they can add additional hours, but it is a seven hour block. Yeah. So you have your seven hour blocks. And then for your scenario, you're saying that you want to have a seven hour wedding. So that means that in your contract, you have to pay for extra hours. It will be in your contract. I, on the other hand, I may only want to have an hour wedding. I don't have that much time. So my, my contract will look completely different from yours. I may not need to buy the extra block to set up and break down. But you have, let's say you want to have, you know, this, you know, um, uh, ancestry wedding where you have, you know, some people have like a, for an African wedding and a traditional wedding and then, you know, another something after that. Well, you already know that it's going to be long. So you're going to pay in your contract. You're going to know what you need and you're going to pay for whatever it is that you need. It's not different from the rules. Okay, so now you're saying you got to pay for this this, month, this 30 to 120 minutes, you got to pay for that. No, I did not say that. I, I said okay, that. So it, that's, what you're, that's what you just said. Oh, okay, you said okay. So for, 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 for clarity, yes and no. So if the contract... Okay, so let me... Hold on. Before you go, before you go any further. Okay. So what kind of contract, if the contract is not that clear, yes and no is not an answer, that you need to clear <laughs> that up for what you actually got to pay for. What is going, you, how, how, this is going, how this is going to work? Because again, somebody's going to say, oh, my coordinator can't come in and tell... The start time. The and contract gonna, start they're, time. And they're going to tell. And they're going to tell anybody who's with them that my contract is from twelve to seven, so you can't get in until twelve. Correct. To decorate for a wedding that starts at twelve. Oh, <laughs> you. I think you're missing it, Councilman. But see, that's what I'm saying. I, this is all. This is not. It's not clear. A contract it, should, be, should be clear. Either you want to have. It's, it should say you got a seven hours on the rules and regulations. Seven hours. You got a half hour for uh, setup. An hour for breakdown. That's what it's supposed to be. Okay, so that's what I'm so, saying. You need to put that needs to be in that needs to be in your rules and regulations or in your in your uh in your um fee schedule to make it okay. clear that somebody can come in a half hour before and 30 minutes after. But you're saying you're gonna decide on what, what event it is to decide who gets what or whatever. And not like you don't do contracts like that. You sit there and the, 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 every event, you get 30 minutes of setup or whatever, and so many. So many minutes to break down. Perhaps that's, that's, that's the way it needs to be. Perhaps terms, a definition of terms, we can introduce that into a contract so people know what the difference is. Why can't you just put it in the diagonal speed schedule and just say, say you get a 30 minutes before and, and an hour after, or whatever the heck it is, or however you want to put so, it 45 minutes so, before, 45 minutes after? So I see Councilwoman Guillaume I'm saying maybe she can provide clarity. Uh, uh, Councilwoman Guillaume. Thank you, Council President and Councilman um, Herring. I'm, I'm going to try to offer my, my tidbit here. So two different terms. Contract includes setup and breakdown and events. Contract, the term contract is all inclusive. It includes setup, breakdown, and event. Event time is the time when you're expecting guests to arrive. So if we're looking at an event time that starts at 12 o'clock, the contract, the contract will include 10 a.m. to whatever the event time and breakdown is. So that's one. Again, event is when the event, when guests arrive, when if it's a party, when the, when everything, people are allowed to come in. Contract, again, is solely when you have the vendors or whoever's coming in to decorate or to actually make sure that everything is okay. So that's one. The other thing, as I'm understanding it, is there is a max right now um, for seven hours rental, which is which, again, includes setup and breakdown. Contract, seven hours, period. Now, if 
of if I am a guest and I'm sorry, if I am someone who's interested in renting for more than seven hours, like what Councilman Herring is saying, if I am interested in having a seven hour event, then I will have to pay for an additional amount of time for the setup and breakdown to be included in the contract. Again, that's if the event, if the wedding itself, the guests arrive and the guests leave within, within seven hours, then that means it's the event is seven hours, but I need a decorator. I need whoever the vendors are, the DJ or whatever to come and set up. So that means I will have to pay for additional amount of hours for my contract. And again, contract is solely when the people can, the vendors can come in. So as I'm reading number 13, what it's saying is as a vendor, if I'm using Councilman Herring's example, if I have an event that's going to go on from 12 to seven, I'm going to, the wedding's about to start at 12 o'clock, at 12 o'clock when the guests come in, guests come in, then that means I would have to get into a contract from t- my, my, excuse me, I would have to have a contract from 10 a.m. and my my decorator, my DJ, whomever, they cannot enter before 10 a.m. because that's not the contractual obligation. So that's what I, I want to just offer as my take on it. So thank you, guys. Thank you, Councilman Gill. All right, Councilman Harris, are you ready to move on? Okay, now, like I said, Councilwoman Guillaume explained that beautifully. She explained it, but everybody's not <laughs> like Councilwoman Guillaume. But again, I still, it's still, it's still, I still think thirteen in the, in that section need to be either need to be adjusted or um, something. You know, I'm, it just doesn't it, because people are gonna read it just like I read it, and uh, even though, and again, the contract is a contract. I don't know how they write contracts. My thing is, you write the contract based on your fee schedule. And if you want to add, if you want to add extra hours, it doesn't say you're adding extra hours. You know, if you add extra hours, they can come in early. Now, I get, I think, but if you want to give them thirty minutes or an hour to come in and set up as a as a as a setup time, then that should be in a fee schedule. Because again, it should say it should say they should they should mirror each other. Because again, people are going to read that and be like, okay, um, I can't come in until the start time of the, the event start time. So it's, it's, if, if we're having this much discussion and we're council members, you can imagine what the renters going to be saying. And, I'm, and and my thing is, I don't like people to be, I don't think, I don't like things to be left up to interpretation. It should be clear and concise what you're going to get when you pay for your, pay for this room. So that's it on that. We can move on because I'm, I'm tired of beating this dead horse. Um, okay. Um, the next item is. Oh, I, I did want to ask a question because this was kind of strange to me. Um, the last item, parking and grounds. Uh, if you go to page seven at the top, it says um, all deliveries will be made through the handicapped doors. Um, oh, oh, da, 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 da. wheelchair access is available. I'm sorry, not that one. Loading and unloading. Number three. Go down to number three. That right there. Why are we having vendors bring food across our carpet when there's a side door they can bring food into the kitchen to 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 uh, load and unload? That was, that's what the last go room coordinator was doing. I never understood the logic in that. Why would you have somebody bringing greasy food with risking spilling it on the carpet through the daggone doors across the carpet when they can go in the side door right into the kitchen? I mean, could any, Ms. Bond, could you explain that to me? Um, well, they do use the the um, back door. Um, however, they're still bringing in food in the, um, you know, risking getting food on the carpet because they're bringing it in into the gold room to set it in the areas um, for um, where where the food is located. So, I mean, that's that's just part of the carpet. Um, but they are u- utilizing that that um, side door as well. Bring food in the side door or the, or the <laughs> handicap door. Both. So they're, they're utilizing the um, 
the side door, this where the employee entrance is, okay, that's right. where caterers are coming in. But okay. if you have DJs, all of that that will well, be yeah, I understand the them. Door. Mm -hmm. Them, I understand them, but I just didn't understand like this last one. I didn't understand her logic at all. Bringing food in on the side and the side door across the carpet because again, that's a longer trip that you got a more chance of spilling stuff, taking it in, than you do taking it, putting it on a service bay and putting it on a table. So. Um, you have less chance of, of solving more of the carpet. So, okay, I, I'm, good, I'm good right there. Just wanted to know about that. All right. Um, very rapidly. So, um, now if you go down to capacity seating, the number at the very bottom, four round tables with, with 250 guests, 32 tables at eight per table. What if somebody wants 10 per table? I mean, there's not, not going to be any space for a table. I mean, that's different. Um, I mean, it used to be, it, it actually used to be 10 per table. Wait, um, they, even though it was kind of crowded. Fit at that used table. To be, huh? 10 people can't fit at that table. 10 people can't fit at the table because it used to be 10 per table before COVID. Because I know people used to, it used to be 10 per table. Then they dropped it down to six on COVID. Then they took it back up to eight. But some people do do 10. I've been, I've been to events, plenty of events where it's 10 per table. I was just at an event just the other day at the Western. It was, was it a bigger table. was it a bigger table? Because no, that's the same size that we have. Uh, it's the same yeah. size that we have. So I mean, I mean, I was just saying if somebody wants 10 per table, I mean, shouldn't that be their prerogative? I mean, I mean, less that you have to put up. You know, I just was wondering about that. I just don't think it should be limited to no eight per table if somebody wants to have 10 per table and maybe want to have a little bit more space. If they feel like they if they're comfortable with it and the people are comfortable with it, that's their decision to make. They're paying over two thousand dollars for the room. I don't think they should be dictated how many chairs they're going to have around the table as long as it ain't like, you know, 12 or 13 and people on top of each other, but um, they, those tables do hold 10, technically. So, all right. Um, I guess go to the next page, page eight. Um, I think um, this this available rental items. Why are we charging? Why are we? Why are we going to offer available rental items? I'm thinking. And and in the first I, first issue is the podium with Mike. I think that should be included in the price. I don't think we should be renting an extra charge for a podium and a mic. I think that should be that, that should just be a given. I don't think. I mean. I mean that that's when you just nickel and dime. And I mean every other place you go, they probably give you a podium and a mic. But if you want to use a the total AV system, that's completely different. But a podium and a mic, I think that should just be standard for um, renting this room. Again, the reason why people rent the room is because of the flexibility of the room and the things that it comes with it. But because um, otherwise, other than that, you don't get many other amenities. But I think, um, um, yeah, all of these other items, do we have all of these items? Um, we have the majority of this stuff. We're we're looking with um I'm looking to purchase this is um hold on if you go down some more. Actually we do. We have all of these items. Projected. We don't have the projector in the stand yet. Um in the projector screen, but I'm looking to get those items in for A V purposes. So so the renovations that y'all plan this that y'all are thinking about doing, mm -hmm. don't include an AV system? It did. I included that in there. And we're still going to buy a projector and the screens. I'm like, get that to them for you too. But um, I'm just saying, I just think, I do think the podium and the mic with the mic should be included in or in, in, be a freebie. I think that's just nickel and diamond right there. You know, I, I really do. Um, I, I still don't understand why we offer the other stuff either, because people, most, most people bring their own stuff in there. Um, and do are we still giving our paper tablecloths? We are not. No. Why not? Um, because it costs, and we have been um, we've been uh, running out. Either the client has been bringing in their linen, or they have been running from us, which we have been um, uh, making money there. Running from us. Running the tablecloths. So the tablecloths are much cheaper than 
And I think they I think they actually in the original in the original option table clause are included in original pro in the original uh rules and regulations, tables of cards are included. So I don't understand that. No, my thing is, so you're telling people they got to bring their own tablecloths in or rent them from us? I'm giving them the option where they can bring their own tablecloths in or they can rent them from, from the city of Glen Arden, yes. Yeah, I don't think that's right. I think you need to opt those. Uh, first of all, uh, the tape, paper tablecloths have never been discontinued because the rules and regulations that are in place now requires people to have tablecloths if they want tablecloths. That's what the rules and regulations say. That's a decision that the council should have made if they were to be discontinued. Um, and second of all, to sit there and have those tables out there and then force people to rent tablecloths from us, I don't think that's good. Not, not at $10 a pop. I think it's in the $10 a pop, $10 a table. Is it $10 a table for the tablecloths? Yes. Yeah. And then they got to be cleaned afterwards. And how much does it cost to clean them? I have been cleaning them till we get a washer and dryer. You've been cleaning them until we get a where, 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 where are we going to put a washer and dryer? So that's what Tanika was looking at when she came in. Okay. And so between the tablecloths and the water and electricity that we're going to use for these tablecloths is going to be an, an additional expense versus disposables, which, you, which are 12 cents a piece that you can take off and throw away and not have to worry about anything and worry about washing. I don't think that they were paying 12 cents a piece. I think that they were buying them by the bulk. And they they were... did buy them by the bulk, but by bulk, it was about 12 cents a piece. 12, I think it's 12 or 20 cents, one of the two. I know it was it was it was cents per tablecloth. I think it was by the bulk by the by the bulk that they were getting it by, which were much cheaper than what you're doing what we're doing now. So I still think that this should be offered. I think this should be, and I think that should be something that the people the, the person decide whether they want them or not. Again, you have those tables out there. I've seen people coming in and tables are not covered at all. Um, and so if the people don't want to use the tablecloths, they just have a bare table. I, since I've been at the the gold room, the tables have not been um, bare at all. So they so they so they pay the ten dollars for the for the cloth. They will. They have. They don't have a problem with paying the. Actually, they they don't have a problem because they, it's already done before they get there. So they rather have a solution where everything is completely done. Um, and they don't have to worry about anything other than possibly maybe putting a centerpiece on the table if that's what they choose to do. Um, however, if not, they don't have a problem with bringing their own um, tablecloths in either. We're supposed to be high end. OK. All right. OK. That's that's another that's another thing. I think we need to look at that. All right. On to page nine. Okay, all the way at number one, the catering service options. And this is a sticking point for me again, because again, it sounds like we you want all food to be catered or bought in by from a, 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 a what's called a company. Uh, another company, a, a, a prepared food company. Is that what this is? Is that what you're suggesting in these rules? Yes. I don't agree with that. I agree that, and I think we've already said this like three times already, that people can bring in their own food if they sign a waiver. And I don't, I'm not understanding why this hasn't been changed yet. I mean, this is like the third time, I think third or fourth time we brought this up and it has not been changed yet. And I know majority of the council supported it. I, that last time I thought the majority of the council supported it. So I'm not understanding why this hasn't been changed. Ms. Ms. Bond? So when you're saying bring in own food, what, what does that consist of? Bring in their own food. If somebody want to bring in their own food, they're bringing their own food. It might not come from Wegmans. It might not come from, uh, 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 what you call it? Somebody may want to bring their own food. A lot of times at repasses, people bring in their own food because it's a repass and it's last minute. And people cook and bring food in. So if, if you look at the report that I provided um, when I did my research, the majority of the places that that hold repasses um, or the venues, they don't bring in um, their own food. 
it's 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 a licensed caterer or it have to be in a a, a licensed a, a a a licensed kitchen so basically like a sardis or something like that um there's not a lot of places that's bringing in their own food Well, I do know the kind and of food that I they use. I have not had any setbacks with with clients when they come in um um having a, a caterer because they are aware of that being a standard in this area Um, so you're telling people who rent now that they have to have a caterer. Yeah. You are? If they're not having a caterer, then a, a Sardis or something like that, yes. But that's not in the rules. What's in the rules? The rules is that they can bring in outside food as long as they sign a waiver. That's what's in the current rules. Does not require catering only. It says a catering is an option. But it doesn't have to be catering. But I, I'm just saying, again, That um, again, I don't care what other people do. That's what that's my biggest problem with these rules and regulations. I don't care what other other facilities do. You know, I know for a fact that every county facility out here, like I say, uh, uh, Ms. Wilson had an event which I went to over at the community uh, over the rec center. They rented a whole uh, basketball court, and they bought food in there, and they just had to say to sign a way sign a waiver. Went to an event down here on Almarwood Road. It's a recreation facility down there, a rental space down there. They only they bought food in there to sign a waiver. I went to my nephew's wedding up in Bellsville to a facility up there that they rented, and they bought their own food in there, and they only had to sign a waiver. So this catering thing is just a bunch of nonsense because everybody does not have the money for a caterer. That's the whole attraction to go room is that you have option and there's flexibility in it. And I know the county allows waivers. So I don't want to hear nobody coming on here talking about the county requires this and the county requires that because the county does it themselves. Only thing they don't, only only room they don't do it in is the main ballroom where they actually require caterers like the Prince George County Ballroom. Um, but a lot of them don't. I know a lot of facilities don't. Again, this is a rental space. This is not a banquet or a, a, a hall where you're cooking anything. So as long as they sign a waiver, they should be able to bring their food in. And I think that we're just trying to Once again, be something that we're not. Eliminate certain people from being able to rent a, a nice facility and have a nice event. And I'm not understanding of why it hasn't been changed after it's been told three times to change it. So I guess you're just not going to do it. Is that what it is? Because the council has already said it, I think, three times. And I actually was in a room when um, the council clerk actually told you that the council wanted that put in there and you said you didn't want to do it. And I'm just saying, I'm trying to figure out why. after the council has, has, has dictated that to you. I, I didn't hear the council tell me to do it. I the heard council, the, the, I, I heard the council clerk. That's not the council. The, the, and actually I was waiting for this meeting to have that so we can be clear on on that topic. Ms. Dunn, we've mm -hmm. had the, the council president, when he first came on here, he said, this is like the second or third meeting we had on these rules. And at the at the at the second meeting, I know for a fact at the second meeting that we specifically talked about that having people be able to bring food in. It was a, a point a long discussion. And so I'm not sure why. And then when the council clerk said that the she said the council said they would like to have it in there, and you said you didn't want it in there. And I was sitting right there at the desk when she when they had when y'all had the conversation because she was trying to update the resolution for you. It was up in the air. It was not uh, up in the air. The it was it was. The It was not was up, up in the, in the air. air. It was not, Ms. Bond, don't sit there and try to tell me, don't sit there and try to call me no liar now because I know for a fact it wasn't up it in was, the air. And I got to pull the meeting. If I got to pull, pull the video, I'm going to pull the video because I know for a fact that council members said they wanted that option to bring food in with the waiver. And I know that for a fact. And the majority said that and, and we discussed it and we said it, we needed it to be in there. As a matter of fact, I pointed it out the second time and said it wasn't in there. And council members said they wanted it in there. And that's in my notes. And that meeting was public. You were there, you were on it. I'm assuming you were on it. We were talking about your resolution because it was it was discussed. And there's, there's no way in the world you're going to sit here and say, I, you, you did not know. I, I knew you know, because we said it three we. mentioned it three times. I know in the last time we mentioned it, we had a lot of discussion on it because somebody kept on saying, oh, well, you know, they, nowhere in the county do you need, you need a catering license. Somewhere in the county, everybody needs something in the county. The county requires this and the county don't require it. The county do require, do allow waivers. 
So, um, so Kelsey, I'm not right. understanding why this hasn't been changed. So I think that needs that needs to be addressed, and that needs to be changed that you can't bring in outside food if as long as you sign a waiver. And we're not we're not liable for anything. We haven't been liable for anything, and everybody has signed that waiver. And the people have been bringing in food for 40 years, and nobody's gotten sick. And if somebody did get sick, we're not liable because they signed the waiver saying we're not liable. That's why we had the attorney draw that up just for that specific reason. So I'm just I'm just trying to figure out why it's not being put into these contracts over and over again. And we keep on revisiting the same topic. So I'm not sure where we're gonna go on that, but I think we need to um we just need to be addressed and and, and cleaned up and, and put in there like everybody's requested it. Again, that facility is not no high-end facility, it's a facility for people to come. It's a nice facility for people to have an event who can't afford the Mont's Crosswinds and the PG County ballrooms and all the catering that's involved. So I'm not understanding what the issue is here. And I, and I, and I, I guess my the, the sticking point for me is that, again, the council has already mandated what they wanted and it's not getting done. And I have a problem with that because, again, and I said this before, that that gold run belongs to the way this government is organized is the citizens of Glen Arden, the elected officials, and they make the direction and put the rules and regulations in place on how things are going to move in this government. So once it's done, once it's said, then it needs to be done. Um, we can move on to page 10. I, I, I do want that in there. I want the waiver in there. I want that put in there that you can bring your food in from outside. I don't, I don't, I'm not understanding why that affects, uh, affects the golden coordinator one way or the other. What difference does it make whether they bring it in or not? Great. So point of order, Councilmember Herring, uh, I tried to let you finish, but it seemed like you're, you're just going to continue to go. Um, so two things. One, uh, when Ms. Bunn is given an answer, please let her finish giving the answer because you cut her off and didn't let her finish her answer. Um, I respect that you have questions, but you also have to respect that she's going to try to respond comprehensively, and so you have to, to allow her to do that. Uh, the second thing is, on this point, let's just do a consensus right now on whether we will want to put in a waiver uh, for um, what would be considered unlicensed food. Because point this, of order, Council President. Uh, Councilman Jones, what's your point of order? I've waited uh, long to, uh, you know, to uh, have a say, but if you look at the back of the uh, the uh, rules that she's given us for the gold room. She's included the county mandate where uh, about caterers, and she also has it in there that says Prince George's County Health Department uh, uh, the, and the local health department jurisdictions where the cater a caterer is licensed. Caterers are required to sign catering contracts, and they have to have insurance. She's also included. <laughs> on, on, I'm sorry. It's also <laughs> included. On the back of the uh, go room rules, Prince, what Prince George's County requires as far as catering is concerned, and 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 where uh, catering has to be at these events. Now I don't know where these other places are that don't uh, where the county has. We can't write a waiver to uh, to violate the law. That means I can just write a waiver to give to the police chief and tell him I can run every stop sign. In, in the city of Glen Arden when that is not true. I can't write a waiver for that. You cannot write a waiver for a caterer. The county and the state of Maryland requires you to have a license and insured, insured cater. And Prince George's County is a stickler about that because of the fact is that they had an out, a poison outbreak. So they want to make sure, I mean, to that the citizens of Prince George's County are safe from that. So she has on the back of this res resolution that, you know, Prince George's County requirements. And she what also- pages that, Council Jones? Thank you, Council President. I'm sorry, Councilwoman Jones, what the page was that that you were referencing? The last two pages of the, uh, res of the um, there you go, right there. Go back one. It starts right, go back. It starts right there. That page and the and the page behind it. It gives you Prince George's County regulations. Okay. Councilman Gill. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Um, thank you, Council President, and my colleagues who spoke before me. I I 
must echo one of the things that um, Councilman Herring actually stated, which is that there are other facilities in Prince George's County. I personally know of a few that actually allow um, folks to bring things, I'm sorry, bring food outside um, and they too can fill out a form. So if we are looking at what Councilwoman Jones just referenced, which is what's on the screen right now that Ms. Bunn has provided, my larger question is, why are we not researching the other venues that do allow folks to bring things outside of being catered um, into the facilities and they are located in Prince George's County? So I, I say that because I am also one and I've been a very, very vocal about it. Um, I am a proponent of having a waiver. But again, I just want to say that this is good, but obviously there's something else because there are other venues who do allow their guests to bring food that are not that without a catering license and they are located in Prince George's County. So why not look and see what they've been doing? Thank you. Thank you. Hey, also, Miguel, just quickly, we can look into it. Um, it's my understanding that the county is cracking down on those people who are allowing it. That's my understanding, but we can definitely still look into it. I hear you. And I believe also one of the things that's interesting is that I, off the top of my head is I believe there was like even parks and recs, like on their website, you're allowed to bring things outside, um, you know, outside catering food. Um, and that's Prince George's County, you know, so just want to say that. And I, I can more than um, if people have time, I can again send names of venues that actually are located in Prince George's County that do allow outside catering. Thank you. All right, Council McGee, I'm sorry, Councilman Fareed. Yes, Council um, President, thank you. I was just gonna say, I, I actually just booked an event at a Parks and Recreations facility today, and I didn't even have to sign a waiver. It just asked me if I was bringing food from home or if I was going to have a caterer. I think what how I interpret that legislation that is attached is that if you are using a caterer, they have to be licensed, not that you must use a caterer. So I don't know if that's something that we want to clarify, because it would make sense for them to say, you know, if you're using a caterer, it has to be licensed, just like, you know, if you're going to have a hair salon, you have to be licensed. Um, but I don't necessarily interpret that to mean that you can only have food that's from a caterer. President, may I? Uh, uh, one second, because I saw um, Councilman Jones' hand before I saw yours, so then I'll come back to you, Councilman Aaron. And then, yeah, and then Vice President Person. Councilman Jones? Uh, yeah, that, like I uh, recommend, my mo other recommendation before was to bring in, have the uh, either one of the inspectors or the uh, uh, I, I, she, the uh, head of the department for public this part of uh, public health uh, Deborah, I can't think of her, Deborah Freeman, have her come in, uh, come to the council meeting or come in and tell us what the difference is. Why is it that uh, Park and Recreations, you know, doesn't require you to have a licensed caterer? And then all the venues in Prince George's County, such as uh, uh, that uh, banquet halls in Prince George's County have to have it. So th evidently we need to find out what the difference is, you know on what the county actually requires. And I would suggest or recommend that we bring this uh, Deborah Freeman in and have her uh, speak to the council. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Jones. Uh, Councilman Heron. Let Councilman for, uh, for work. Let me first and go ahead on that way. To okay. Get, get uh, Vice President Ferguson. I just wanted to say that in looking at this document, that's uh, up is, um, Prince George's County requires all caterers must. Um, the way I interpret it as it's, it's addressing caterers. This is the um, requirements or the criteria for those that are claiming to be caterers. Hi. It does not um, address anything about food, uh, you know, just uh, people bringing in food. So mm -hmm. um, that's a whole other issue with, um, to me. It's, it's different. Because it's not um, clearly, it's, it's. I mean, I don't see anything in the document saying that um, 
personal or private food is not um, permissible. This is just criteria to me um, for okay. caterers. If you're a caterer, you claim to be a caterer, then you need to follow these instructions. It's like if you, you know, have a business, then you need to have a permit and a license and things like that. So that's that's the way I see it. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Meharry? Yes. Can you scroll up on that document? Scroll up. So we can see the very top. Okay. Uh, I mean, scroll down. I mean, scroll down. So we can see the top of the very top of that document, the very title of the document. Oh, that's it right there. Okay, basically, this is what really gets me is because this 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 document is basically the what you what's required for operating a catering business in Prince George's County. It has absolutely nothing to do with what you're doing and what we're doing in the gold room. We are not operating any catering out of that gold room. We do not cook in that gold room. This is just the outline of what is required for a catering business in Prince George's County. And we do not have a catering business in that room. So this does not, this actually really has absolutely nothing to do with the gold room and how we run it. Again, the county has constantly always allowed you to bring food in. It's your responsibility. And you and you you, you when you sign a contract, I, I think but you it's something in there that probably says, you know, any liability, food, whatever, is your responsibility. Because again, like I said, I know three facilities that I've been in and they brought their own food in there. So again, this document here is just, I don't know why it's in here, because we don't we're not operating a catering business. Mm -hmm. We're not running a catering business. But if somebody says they are a catering business, then they need, they need to adhere to this 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 criteria this criteria here. So that's all I wanted to say on that. So if anybody wants to speak on that, they can before I move on. Uh, right. this okay. So uh, I'll go to Councilman Free and then we close it out. Councilman Free, is that a new hand or an old hand? It it was a new hand. Sorry, I couldn't get off mute. Um, I'm just going to say, I, I don't want to go the route of having somebody come visit our meeting. We talked about this many, many months ago, and it was said that, that someone would have research or have someone come, and that wasn't done. I think that the interpretation, um, as I articulated it, Council Vice President articulated it, um, and Councilman Herring is the same, that this is pertaining to if you're using a caterer. It's not saying that you can only use a caterer. But if you are using a caterer, they need to be licensed. So I think we should just move forward with the waiver, as the majority of us have discussed previously. We've had plenty of opportunity to bring experts in to clarify whatever was felt needed to be clarified, and we didn't do that. So I think we should just move forward. Okay. Um, as I recall, there there was a consensus done before, uh, but for, you know, just transparency's sake, let's do a consensus um, on whether we want to have a waiver uh, for food. Uh, Councilman Free, yes, no? Yes, we should have a waiver. Okay. Councilman Jones? No. All right, Councilman Heron? Yes. Councilman Guillaume? Yes. All right, Councilman Harrison? Oh, I don't think. Was he online? I don't know if he's online. No. Uh, Vice President Ferguson? Yes. He was on. Yes, I um, yeah. Yeah, yes, mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to abstain just because I just don't have clarity on what a caterer, what what constitute catering. Um, it's a judgment call for me. If 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 you know, no, nah, I'm not going to prolong this meeting. Mine is abstain. Um, all right, moving on. What page? Mm -hmm. uh, we are we done, Council Bahir? I'm done with that. Yeah, I'm, I'm done with that. Um, okay, I guess I, I just need clarity on this. This um, on page eleven, um, where it's talking about alcohol for ticketed events. Ticketed events with alcohol must have a ticket system 
as part of the ticket sales to ensure proper management of alcohol. It's um, page 11. Yeah, right there where it says alcohol for ticketed events. So what is what exactly is that? So if I'm just curious, if you have a wedding, you gotta have tickets for people to get drinks. Is I mean not a wedding, I'm sorry, a ticketed event. But but I thought if we had ticketed events, they had to have a liquor license, but you're saying they also gotta have a ticket system. So what is that? So meaning that they um so what I tell them is that if if they're doing like let's say if they have um um let's say like a reunion um and they purchasing tickets right that their guests are purchasing tickets um like on um what is that uh, Eventbrite um I just tell them if they wanted to have like a bar that they can't take cash at there they have to have a, a ticket system basically. Um, like on Eventbrite, create a system on Eventbrite to um, make sure that they know how that how how that's going to work because you can't take cash um, the day of. Okay, so th so they can't have a cash bar. No, but they can do a ticketed. So they'll get the ticket when they come in, or how would that work? How would you how would you how would you monitor that? Then I just get my alcohol. Say that again. Say how how do you monitor that that they're not just giving it out without a ticket? I mean, well, well we have security there, um, and um, just to monitor everything, like as far as cash or whatever like that. But there is no; they can't take any cash at the bar. Okay, mm -hmm. so it's almost like paying for your drinks ahead of time and then giving a ticket. It, or you can have, or they can have an open bar. Okay, but they can't have an open bar. If they have an open bar, do they need tickets? No, no. Okay. Mm -mm. <clears throat> okay. I, I don't even That's that only in cases needed. like if it's like a reunion or something like that, where maybe they're trying to like um, oh, get their money, money back or oh. like alcohol or something that mm -hmm. they will have to create some type of system in order to get their money back because they can't get cash take ca we can't take cash in the in the room oh, okay i i personally don't think the option should even be there to tell you the truth i won't even give them that option all right okay um whatever that is um i guess and then if you go down you see where it says ticket sales and cash collecting are not permitted on the premises of Jay's Now Cousin Municipal Center. This includes Cash App, PayPal, Zelle, and, or any online systems. How would you actually know if they're doing any of that? I don't. But however, we putting it in the in our contract just to make sure that they know that. Okay, because uh, I'm. Mean, I mean, I just think you know, you put it in there, but I mean, there's no way to monitor it. So really, it's a. It's a empty threat because you will never know if somebody did cash out paypal or zelle unless you take their phone and look at it and i know that ain't gonna happen so i just i just was curious on how you would monitor that why that was in there all right um i guess the next thing is i'm uh, uh if we go to page 13 and i just want to i just have a question on if you're going to be done with this um page 13 of rates Okay, I'm looking at these rates and I'm just trying to figure out how y'all came at these numbers. Um, I know again, y'all, you, when I hear you compared, but um, I also did some comparison myself. Um, um, let's see. Um, can I share my screen real quick? Let me see if I can share um, what I have here. If you don't mind, uh, Council President. Let's see right Oh, I need to be. Uh, not, I need to be um, enabled. It's not enabled. Uh, well, it says. It, let me see. Now it says host disabled participant screen sharing. All right. I think you should be able to go now. Okay.
Okay, so um, basically, I just I just wanted to compare what we're doing with what's out there. I mean, the proposal for the current, and I was looking at the current rates in uh, the 2012 rates, since that's where we we're supposed to be at. I guess that's where we're at. I mean, but things have been rescinded so many times. So I um, looked at this, and I'm looking at what we have now at five and a half hours. $1,500 for Friday or Saturday, 9 to 8 p.m. It's about $272 an hour for that event. But if you look at the new rate, which would probably be, I think somewhere around here, it goes up to 20, it goes up to $2,400, but you're getting seven hours. And on a, oh, that's a Saturday, I'm sorry, Friday. So on a Friday, it goes up to $2,150. You get seven hours, it's three hundred and seven dollars. So we're taking it up by just three dollars thirty dollars. We're adding about another hour and a half. And I'm trying to figure out what financially, what is that doing? Because again, if you're gonna add another hour and a half. That means you're going to have more people there. And if, I think the staff is getting paid $15 an hour. So two people, that covers their expense. So you're really back to where you were before. Um, you're going to break, you're going to make it make what you were making before, which is basically literally, literally nothing. Um then I looked at the the prime the, the cabaret I was in the in the 2012, which is two thousand dollars, Friday and Saturday, 8 p.m. to 2 a.m. So I got the closest thing to that. And we again, we're taking it up seven hours. It's three hundred and sixty three dollars an hour. So Saturday nine to four is three fifty seven. So that's less than what we were paying. We were charging before because you increase the hours. And then if you go to the prime time, the, the nighttime hours, it's only forty three dollars, about forty four dollars more than what we were charging before. And again, if you got two extra people to cover those hours, basically that's eating up um, um, for those events. So you're really, really at the same place. Um, Non-prime time, again, we went, we already went over that, that 900 versus 400 Monday through Friday versus the new rates, which is 900 and 1100 for Fridays. Um, and then repasses, $85 an hour, so you're looking at three hundred and forty dollars um, with a fifty dollars security deposit, and you're taking repasses up to five hundred dollars with a two hundred dollars security deposit, and okay. and that's for four hours. Um, mm, that's a lot of money. Um, you've gone it's gone up one hundred and sixty dollars, and then you're adding a two hundred dollars security deposit, even though they get that back. I think the, the security part. I don't know. I, that that that's that's quite a bit. Um, but the, I think that the thing that's really telling here is that the Prince George's County Ballroom, which we got those figures, they charge $393 per hour. And they give you, on Monday through Friday, they give you seven hours at 393 which is twenty seven fifty four, And on Saturday, they give you um, eight hours, which is thirty one three thousand one hundred forty six, which is $393 per hour. Now, they're charging $393 per hour hour and you're getting eight hours or 3150 you're getting eight hours and we're charging 2850 for seven hours and we're, we're basically our rate is basically more than what the pg county ballroom is charging so more more, more than likely people are going to be like well, i just pay the extra you know I, I go to pg county ballroom first and if they do a, another event say earlier event on a monday through friday they'll be like i'll just pay the extra forty dollars and go to the PG County Ballroom. So these are uh, these prices are not um they're not competitive. They're not competitive at all. Cause any late out, any late event, they're paying more than what they would be paying at the Prince George's County Ballroom. Um so I don't know how y'all came up with these figures. I don't know if y'all didn't look at the hourly rates versus um uh a PG County Ballroom, because everybody's talking about the PG County Ballroom, because I know I will go to the PG County Ballroom because it has better aesthetics. It has a beautiful uh, green space where you can do an outdoor event if you wanted to. Um, it gives you a lot of options. 
So I'm just curious how y'all came up with these rates. Is it just something that y'all just thought to do? Did y'all did y'all did y'all compare the rates like I just did, realizing that now you're you're charging more for the gold room than you are for the Prince of County Ballroom um, for an evening event, and it's only forty dollars more. I mean, forty dollars less than a PG County Ballroom for a Monday through Friday event, um, early event. So. I'm just curious how y'all got these numbers. I really do. I don't think there's been no and ana, uh, nobody analyzed these rates. Nobody an, looked at the market. Nobody looked at anything to see what we really need to be charging. They just looked at everybody else and said they're charging this, so we're going to charge that, and not even looking at the the the, the um, amenities that make up that price and what they're offering. I I, I really think that. That needs to be looked at. If you want to charge something, at least give a reason why you're charging more than you are the Prince George County Ballroom. And see, and this is why you you really got to look at to these things when you're out here doing this stuff, you know, not just sit there and do comparison shopping, you know, because somebody, I know somebody that won't buy, buy a TV at Walmart, but they'll buy it at, uh, at Macy's. Same TV, but you're getting it from Macy's, so it's better, you know. You're paying a little bit more, so it's better. But no, you know, that's not what it is. And now you're looking at the rates we have here, $407 an hour versus 393 and that's a pre enjoyed kind of ballroom versus our gold. Yeah, I don't think, yeah, you're going to drive people away. That's the biggest problem I, I see now is that you're trying to you're trying to make some make this a, a room that it is not ready is not yet to be, and even with remodeling, then you still cannot get the amenities that the Prince George County Ballroom will give you or some of these other, uh, you know, Mont's Crosswinds or Camelot, you know, in Prince George County. And everybody compares Prince George County Ballroom. Anybody who's been there knows how, how what a, a beautiful room that is, and the, and the green space that it has that you can do a lot of other things, you know, besides just an indoor event. So I just was, I'm just curious about that. So for these prices, did you just comparison shop and pick the price? Is that what the, is that what, how y'all came to these rates? Because the hourly rates just don't sync up for me. Not when you run in a business. Um, so I looked at different locations other than PG Ballroom and the locations that you were referring to. I looked at Lofts. Um, um, I looked at, um, which is, uh, way more smaller, um, and a blank canvas. Um, and they were a lot more expensive, not just in PG County. I looked in Waldorf area, um, and all of the venues, I looked at their prices, um, and what they were actually providing. And that's what I actually came up with. Um, so I'm not sure where you got these numbers from. Um, but I did I did do a lot of research um, in the in PG County and also in um, around, you know, other areas um, around the PG area as well. Came off your spreadsheet. I got these numbers off your spreadsheet. The Prince George County Ballroom numbers, I, I didn't call to get them. They're right there on your spreadsheet. And, I, and that's what they say they get. I mean, I'm not. Yeah, I mean, that's where I got them from. All the numbers on here I got from your spreadsheet, except for the, the, the old numbers I got from the resolution, but these proposed numbers are on your spreadsheet. And I just, and I took the numbers from the non-resident because that's normally what we get. And I multiplied it by seven hours. And these are the, num these are the numbers I got, which are with the hourly rate that you have. Um, with the rate, I mean, no, not the hourly rate. This is actually the rate you have, 2150 for seven hours, 2499 for seven hours, based on these hours, on these times. So I took all of this from your spreadsheet and the, and the, the Prince of County Ballroom, I took that from your spreadsheet too. I, I, mean, I didn't get those numbers. And then I took that number and I multiplied, I mean, I divided it by eight and it gave me the um, hourly rate. And if you were, if you were um, yeah, and I just took it for the regular, uh, for a resident, you know? Um, so that's what I did. Um, if I took it for the non-resident, you'd be way over. I mean, I mean, if it took it for resident, it'd be over. I mean, the numbers would be, the hourly rates would be way different. So, I mean, I, I got it from this from the spreadsheet. I'm just trying to figure out what, how how y'all came at, how you come at this. And my thing again is that, you know, when you look at something like this, you need to look look at what's around us because that's our competition. You know, there's a lot of venues around here that's just like warehouse venues that they just turn into ballrooms or well, not even ballrooms, just uh, I don't know what you want to call them. You know, they're like. Um, 
little halls, let's say uh, uh, event halls. They're just event halls and they do them in soul fronts and some other places. And again, our competition is the Peach Friends of County Ballroom, Mont's Crosswinds, all of them. Um, you know, the, the county facilities, because a lot of county, a lot of county facilities are utilized, um, like the recreation center in, in these park buildings. So I'm just as curious how you get the numbers and how we are going to be charging more per hour than the Prince Rose County Ballroom for a Saturday event in the evening. Um, yeah, that's just, I mean, I mean, these are just questions that need to be answered. And I think we need to look at that closely. Again, I think, still think a, a, a formal analysis should have been done by somebody that's really savvy with the business in, 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 the, in the atmosphere, in the, um, environment, the meeting room environment in this area. Um, because just on these numbers out here, just based on what everybody else is doing is not making it marketable. Is making it, it's a guessing game that, okay, if I take these rates up, people will pay them because they're not paying as much as the Prince Rose County Ballroom. But technically, right now, they're paying less. I mean, we're, I mean they, they'll pay the Prince Rose County Ballroom less than what we're paying based on um, the 2850 that we're paying and for seven hours. And you get eight hours on a Saturday for the PG County Ballroom. So this is 400, ours is 407. So you're talking about, even though it's $14, but they see it as a difference. And they're not going to pay 14 I, I'll pay the extra 14 I mean, I'll pay the less money to go to the Prince Rose County Ballroom, and i pay a little bit more during the week to use the Prince Rose County Ballroom. $40? That ain't nothing, you know, for seven hours, $280? That extra $300 to it, and you get a nice room like that with the amenities that you have and the outside greenery and everything else, so... That, those are my questions. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm basically done. Um, um, oh, I did have one more. I did have one more. Um, the um, the memorial service. Um, so. So I, I just want to understand this because we I know we we'll go back because uh, the maximum is four hours one hour for setup one hour for a breakdown so it's like the four everything is included in that four hours so you technically get two hours for the actual event is that what we're saying for the memorial services no I'm you. So um, I believe the so the memorial service is four hours. You and you get one hour for setup, and you get one hour for breakdown. So technically six hours. Six hours, really? Hmm. Okay. At thirteen hundred dollars. So we're just going to do away with memorial services because even with that, and understand that the, the lobby, because some of them are no longer memorial service, they're more like a cabaret. Um, yeah, I, 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 you know, me personally, I think they should get two hours and one hour for set. It should be four hours all in, and included, everything's included in that. Um, and they get two hours for the memorial service because it's a memorial service. Four hours give you a party. Um, yeah, so that's my family in that one. And, um, this thing with the stage, it says to be determined. What is that on page 15? It says to, to be determined available option. I believe at one point we were trying to see if we were going to move the stage or if we're going to keep the stage. It, but that's that's something that we're we're looking in with Tanika to see if we're going to do an upgrade or if we're going to remove it. Um, if we remove it, of course, you know, guests will have more space in there. Um, but that's I believe that's where that came from. Okay. Um 
Yeah, so that's that's an issue for me too. Because one, that's a mobile stage is pretty good. We moved it all over the place. We used it for an Arden Day one year, moved it in, moved it out. So it's a portable stage; you can move anywhere in that room. That's why it's in there. It's in sections. Um, and basically, let's see. I think that's it for me. All right. Okay, yeah. Um, oh, one one other thing on the master catering liability waiver. Um, I just want uh, one thing. And it's just I'm just curious on the master master the go room liability waiver, and it's the same thing for the community room. It says, I agree that I have selected a caterer of my choice to serve all food for my event and agree that all leftover food distributed at this event be removed in a closed styrofoam or plastic container. And that they should not use any plates with aluminum foil. What business is it of the of us, how they take the food out of there? Well, do you want food spilt on the floor? Well, they, if food won't get spilled, on, I mean, they're eating food at the tables and they're moving around with plates all over the place. If they got it covered with aluminum foil, at least it's covered with aluminum foil and not open. I'm just, I'm just curious as to, 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 to the logic between that because, again, I mean, they move food is all over the place. That's one of the hazards of having an event with food. Um, they're going to drop food at the buffet table. They're going to drop food at the table. They're going to drop food all over the place. That's not covered. At least this is covered with aluminum foil and covered up. I just didn't understand the logic because you can drop a styrofoam container or a plastic container and it'll pop right open and food will be all over the place. So it doesn't, I mean, that's no guarantee that's not going to, it's going to keep food off the floor. I just was curious about that. So again, I think we look at, we, we, we just take things to a level that don't, it, they don't need to be at. So, all right, I'm done with the goal. All right, thank you. Are there any other questions from council members? All right. Um, with that, uh, Ms. Bunn, I think the, um, the waiver was agreed upon uh, and we can move on. Um, Last up is the, is there any other questions related to the, what is it called? Goodness gracious. Community center. Yes, Ms. Ryder. Councilman Mary. Okay, just on page two. Um, I guess the top, Smaller celebrations, meetings, seminars, and workshops only. What do you constitute as a smaller celebration? Uh, Ms. Bond, you're muted. Um, it could be like a tea party. I have people that, that come in for like a tea party or, you know, a smaller event. Okay. Okay, I just want to make sure that nobody's being excluded who wants to use that room. Because um, that's basically what the room is for, is for the community. Um, again, with the tables, you eight to 10 tables, um, if you go down to item number three, four rounds without food service tables, 80 people, four round, four rounds with food service tables, 64. How do you come at that number? Because I know I had an event there and I had 12 tables with food service tables, eight people at each table. So that's 96 people. So how are you coming at 64 people with food service tables? I'm not understanding that. Because again, the room holds more than it. Ms. Bond? From when we did a setup, it that's what I, the numbers that I, I got. Yeah, it's not Thank the numbers. I, and I've, done, I've used the room a couple of times with service tables and had enough room in there for at least... Um, 12 tables. Really, actually, we were going to do 15 because we still had room left, but we just decided to do 12. Um, and we had three longs for setup in the pantry for food. 
Um, cause that's, that's what that space is for. So yeah, I think these numbers are too low for some of these, um, for food service. I think the numbers should be higher for, um, full rounds with food service tables. I, you can get more than 64 people in there and you can get more than eight tables in there. I know that for a fact. Um, yeah, that number is, that number is not accurate. Um, then going on to page three. Yeah, that's the same question I had at the other one. Why are we, no, this, yeah, this, no, this question here is, why are we offering them anything for that room? See, that room is just like a community room. And anything that they, everything, all they need is tables and chairs and everything else they're supposed to bring in themselves. So why are we offering them anything? Because it's not a rental unit and it shouldn't be renting. It's not a rental facility. It's a room that people can use and we charge a usage fee. So we shouldn't be renting them anything else over and above, I mean, the tables and chairs. Um, these, all this other extra stuff, they should not, I don't even know how that's being made available to people because they need to know that everything they bring in there, they need to bring in there and they need to take it out. Because if you bring, if, you, if they rent it from us, it gotta be, it gotta be, it gotta be managed, it gotta be watched, it gotta be accounted for, it gotta be inventory. And I don't think we need to get into all of that. Most people just go in that room, you set it up, and I mean, you go in there, open it up, let them set it up the way they want to, and they clean it up when they finish. And you, you it's less that your staff have to do. I don't know why we're offering any of this stuff. I mean, is there any particular why? I mean, I haven't met no anybody who went to that room. They wanted to have any what were anything else. Everything they bought, they bought themselves. So why are we offering this stuff? I'm not. I don't get it. I mean, and it shouldn't be rental items. It's not a rental facility. Well, it may um, wasn't rented or they didn't ask because it wasn't an option for them. So this is why I provided that option for them. So the events that they're having over there, um, that can already be, you know, set up by the time they get there. They already have a, a, a smaller allotted time frame to get in. Um, so if this is already done, if if it's already run it out, then they have that option. Again, it's, it is an option. They don't have to rent it. Um, they can also bring in their own uh, items. It is, it's not, they don't have to do it. Yeah, I mean, I just, I'm just saying, it just seems like it's just extra work for staff to have to haul this stuff over there and set it up and all this other stuff when all they need to do is set up some tables and chairs and be out, you know, and, and, and be there and just worry about tables and chairs and not have to worry about collecting all this other stuff. Um, all right. Um, and it says additional equipment may be available and added as added services above. Mm -hmm. These items are subject to availability and be requested. Please refer to your current rental schedule. Okay. Um, floor plans and decorations. Copies of the floor plans are available from the event manager. All modifications must go through approval. So, what type of floor plan is, I mean, there's only really like one floor plan, which you can do in that room. It's just set up the, the, the tables at the, the long tables and some rounds. And, you know, I mean, I've been in the room and they set up the floor plan. I changed it because it wasn't what I wanted. Even though I told them what I wanted, I changed it around when I got there. And so I guess I don't, not, again, I'm not understanding. If it's just a community room and people just want to use it and it's just, there, you know, and your people don't have to have to change the room around. If somebody go in there and change it, it should be shouldn't be an issue with that. Um, so, it's a community room. So, point of order, Councilman Harry. Um, we appreciate your line of questioning, but we are about to wrap this meeting up um, soon. So, I'll give you another four minutes uh, at ten o'clock, and then we're going to proceed. Any other questions you can. Uh, direct to her, uh, to Ms. Bum personally, because we, we have had a meeting with the Gold Room. Uh, I understand, unfortunately, we weren't able to to come, but at this point, it's a a, a one man show, and if that's the case, then you know, council members have family members, uh, you know, some have children that need to get ready for school, so we're going to. Um, oh, my concerns cannot be made public because. People got other things to do. I mean, no, we no, just had we, a meeting till one o'clock in the morning. No, we had a meeting. 
We had a meeting. But, but, um, but that doesn't mean I, I, all my questions were answered. I, under, that I, under, I understand. Yeah, but you weren't at that meeting. Um, okay. So then that means that that should have an opportunity as everybody else. Exactly. If we want to discuss it, and I was at a couple other meetings. So, Council Mahari, respectfully, we have three more minutes. You know what? I'll, I'll finish it up on the floor because I'm going to ask the questions on the floor. Um, and I'm, I ain't going to be expecting some answers on it. Um, so I'll just keep the page I got and I'll do it at the regular meeting. Um, okay. I still, I, I should have a right to ask questions. At you this have meeting. a right. No, no, no. And you should not be cutting me off because other council members get on here and they speak way more than I do on the subjects over and over again. Everybody has their voice on here. You know, so when I have my voice, I'm trying to find out what's going on. And I'm sitting here going through uh, 15, 62, 15 page documents and highlighting stuff. And if I wasn't at the meeting, then I should be extended to courtesy to be at least at least get my answers answered, my, my uh, questions answered. Like everybody else had when they had the opportunity. So if you're going to have the meeting, don't say I'm just going to have a meeting and we're going to cut off uh, a question at 10 o'clock because everybody else ready to go and they've already met. So that basically my concern is of no value to anybody. My question is of no value to anyone. That's what you're basically saying. No. Is that my question is not of any value. Anything I have on here that's a concern, I had to email personally to get questions, and somebody else may have the same question. You know? Well, Councilman, Councilman Herring, respectfully, your questions are long. So, for example, you asked Ms. Bunn a question, but you took five minutes to say, well, I've been to this place, I've been to that place, and give your own personal experience instead of just asking a question. Where did you get the numbers from? And she can respond, and then you can, you know, respond to, you know, where she got the numbers to. But there's a personal story that goes along with that is kind of elongated the the questions. Yeah, I mean, the the this meeting has been pretty much predominantly you asking questions for the past two and a half hours. I mean, um, council member give their personal experience. That's what they use as an example. That's part I, of being on the council. We respectfully, all council members on here have given you the floor. Uh, in the past two and a half hours, and there's been no time left for anybody else. So what I'm saying is, is that if you have additional should, questions... Maybe you should continue the meeting because some other council members may have questions. Not, well, That's what you should do. If it is, if you want to wrap it up, then continue the meeting for a part I, two. I, Councilman Herring, uh, you, you're a council member. I, I would suggest that you write the questions down and you can ask them at another time, or you can... No, I'm going to ask them at the regular meeting. I'll take them for the regular meeting. And I'll just okay. ask him if you, I, again, just, because again, I'm going to, I wanted my questions answered and I need, and how you know my constituents aren't interested in it. So again, again, my constituents can't hear my voice and my concerns and some of the concerns they may have given me. So I can't, so that needs to be done privately versus being done publicly. That's no, 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 Council my hair respectfully, it's been two and a half hours. And, Three okay, hours. it's two and a half hours. Yeah. I, I, again, we sat up in a meeting till yeah. one o'clock yeah. in the morning. Yeah, but the not, not, not with one person filibuster in the meeting. It doesn't, I'm not filibuster in the meeting. You give me a document and you want me to, and I go through the document and I have questions on it. I'm not understanding what the problem is. I mean, I have questions, I, I have questions. I'm a council I member agree. and I have a right to ask these questions in a work session. Part of being in being on the council is that you've got to sacrifice some time to address the situations. And we, because agree with because you. I'm the only one, now is the issue. Wow. And I'm not saying, and my thing is this, and what you do is, if you feel like the other council members may have questions, then you have a part two. This is this is more than a one night thing. Because we went over it before, them, it doesn't mean there's, there's not other concerns that's out here that other council members may have. I mean, I spent all day long, all week long going through this and highlighting stuff of my concern, and I don't feel I need to email her personally to get answers. She needs to answer them publicly so everybody can know. Why, would, why shouldn't everybody know what the answers are to them? So, Ms. Councilman, I, I agree with you. It's just that your your questions are five minute questions. Your 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 the true questions are maybe like a ten second question, but it's the fluff around the questions that prolong this meeting. So you can ask as many questions as you want to, but yeah, respectfully, you've been so, long winded. <laughs> I so mean, I gotta answer. I gotta answer questions the way you want me to ask. No, I, I, I you have to be respectful of other people's time. I'm respectful of your questions if you ask the questions, but if you give a personal story or anecdote with each question, then it makes the meeting long. Um, people do it all the time. Meetings run long all the time. I don't say a word about it. I let people go ahead on. Let them go on and go on and go on. I don't care. That's what that's what they, that's what they're about. That's what these meetings about. I'd rather have the citizens be. Up front, I mean, be, I'd rather be transparent with what's going on in the meeting versus leaving it to me going, 
the one-on-one, -on -one, and then I got to go re re relate to all my citizens what I'm, uh, what the answers were. No, I mean, it, that, that's, I, you know what? That's, okay. that's the sacrifice I, I of being you. in the meeting. I got you. So, so I, I mean, I can just ask, I ask him at the regular meeting because I had a few more, yeah. and I just ask him at the regular meeting. So, I understand. Um, I, I motion. You do I, it that way. I submit a motion that we adjourn this meeting. Is there a second? If there's not a second. 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 All right. Um, council. Oh, sorry. Any discussion? Yes, I need a voice vote. All right. Councilman Beharin. No. Councilwoman Guillaume. And you ask the question again, please. I, I, I uh, submitted a motion to adjourn the meeting. Oh, no. Councilwoman uh, uh, Fareed. Yes. Um, uh, Councilman Harrison. Well, is Councilman Harrison here? Councilman Harrison? Yeah, I'm here. It's a motion to adjourn, yes or no? No. Okay. Um, Councilwoman Jones? Yes. Vice President Ferguson? No. I'm a yes. Yes loses. Councilman Herring? You have the floor. Wrap this up so we can get on out of here. I only had a few more questions left. Um, Bonnie to, so the waiver situation also goes for the community room, too, when it comes down to catering, because that's just a community room. I'm just, Correct. I'm sorry, what was your question? So the waiver that we did for the gold room also is for the community room also. You can bring your own food in. Oh yeah, that's okay for both. All right. Um, And I just, and, and um, that's it. I'm done. That's all I had to do. So I'm done. I gave you the, the, the five minutes, Mr. Heron. You didn't use the five minutes. To but see, if you would have just let me finish, it wouldn't have been no problem. You wouldn't have said anything. You spent five minutes. You gave me three minutes. I only needed one. <laughs> all right. Well, I appreciate it, Mr. Heron. Thank you. All right. Appreciate y'all. All right. Any other council members? Council President. Yes, Council um, I Just for a point of clarity, will we be discussing this again before we take it to a vote or is this going to be it and then we go into public hearing and um, regular mm -hmm. meeting for a vote? Uh, no, this is going to the public hearing. Uh, the waiver will be updated. Uh, no one else had any questions or um changes so the the waiver uh will change will be included um and i believe that was it council president council oh, i'm sorry who was that um council clerk there were a couple of more um what i'd like to suggest is that i go and work with uh, miss bunn again and since the majority of them were councilman herrings concerns that we run them past him before the public hearing to ensure everything's as he yeah. So I understand, but it has to be an agreement from the council. So sure, sure. Councilman, Councilman oh, yeah. Herring had voiced his concerns and his opinions, but if the council, uh, if it's a council's majority council's will to not change those things, then it stays as is. That's why I open the floor to the rest of the council. But if there aren't any other changes that the council wants to point out, and agree with Mr. Heron, then they will stay the same. Understood. Okay. All right. So the only thing that the council has agreed on is to include the waiver. And of course, the, the small wording uh, that council, not council, Ms. Bunn stated that it should have said something different, but it didn't. She'll make those changes as well. Okay. 
All right. Well, at this point, I do not need a motion to adjourn. All hearts and minds are clear. The time is 10.07. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Good night.